Everyone, remain calm. Yeah, ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. But then later there's running and the screaming. Somebody talk to me, what is happening? Welcome to Jurassic World. You're listening to the Jurassic Park Podcast. You want to consult here or in my bungalow? <laughs> Hold on to your butt. Well, we're back. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 161st episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Jost, and we're here to discuss all things Jurassic Park. In this episode, we debut a brand new segment called The Jurassic Wire, where we discuss the most recent news in regards to the franchise and, most of all, discuss some of the recent conversations that have been circling the Jurassic Park community. Aaron Byer and I are teaming up for another new monthly segment, so we hope you like everything that we feature in this month's edition of The Jurassic Wire. All debates and conversations in this segment are, of course, our opinions and insights from things that we've seen in the news and, of course, around the community. So I'm going to actually keep this intro short. That's it, because we had an extra long conversation. So let's get this episode kicked off with our first installment of The Jurassic Wire. The debate over Isla Nublar rages on. They're taking no chances of a repeat of the San Diego incident. I'm talking about man-made cataclysmic chain. The U.S. Senate has convened a special committee to answer a grave moral question. Roger that. one clear for takeoff. Begin tracking. Copy that. Go, go! Tracking on it. Welcome, everybody, to the Jurassic Wire. I'm Brad Jost, and my co-anchor for this program is Aaron Beyer. Now, the Jurassic Wire, if you don't know, is the newest segment here on the Jurassic Park podcast where we discuss all the latest news on the Jurassic saga and the latest conversations in the Jurassic community. Today, we're going to be discussing the latest from San Diego Comic-Con, the opening scene from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, fan toxicity, new merchandise and its exclusivity, the Jurassic Compound, fan art and uh, Jurassic art in general, and one of our more recent interviews with Dave Grossman. Aaron, how you doing? I'm doing good, Brad. How are you? I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this new segment. This is going to be a lot of fun. You came up with a name. We kind of brainstormed on the idea, and we're going to cover a lot of stuff that people in the community are talking about and obviously a lot of the news that's uh, in the media right now. So I think it's going to be a, a fun monthly topic or monthly uh, segment. Yeah, I like the idea of kind of taking a deep dive into the news and just the community in general. Um, it's great, I think, every week to get that kind of that briefing. Um, I know I actually use I use you in the podcast as my first source of of getting information, but you know we don't really ever get to like sit around and nerd out about it. So this should be fun. Yeah, and we we kind of tested the segment out in a way um, a few times, not a ton, uh, with our our like news briefings in the actual episode. Like I I usually do the news, but I feel like I don't get enough of the point across because I'm kind of blowing through it really quick just to kind of get the information out there for people to go check out in the show notes and whatnot. Um, but, you know, when I, me and you did it together, we actually had a chance to kind of dive into things a little bit more and discuss our opinions and stuff like that. So that's what I wanted to do here and not kind of confine it to, you know, 10 minutes. I wanted it to be a little bit longer and sort of in the line of the Jurassic Mailbag with Jennifer Tarek, where people really love that segment. It's one of our like number one segments, I think, overall. And I kind of want to make this the same thing without the uh, fan interaction in that sense. But they're the ones that we're pulling this content from in a way, whatever everybody out there on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere else, whatever they're talking about. That's what I want to talk about here. Yeah, you know, the it, it, it's weird. Like you're saying, it, it kind of came from the the news briefings, and I, I totally agree. I think, you know, when we first did the first one, that news was like, 
45 minutes to an hour. And it, that felt like too long, right. <laughs> to, to go over a briefing. Yeah. And then, you know, we got, we, we cut it down to like, I want to say a half hour. And even though that felt kind of long, I, I feel like it, we also didn't get to go maybe as deep as we wanted to go. Yeah, I know we, we did rush through a lot of stuff. So I hopefully we'll not be rushing through it. Um, we'll, we'll take our time, talk about everything we want to talk about. And, uh, Discuss what you guys want to know. Hopefully we cover it well. I mean, we'll we'll try to take a lot of the opinions into account, but mostly it's probably just going to be our opinions um, and talking about what you guys think. But well, I mean, it, you know, it's, it, it is. It's mainly going to be our opinions. But the thing is, is like we're drawing a lot from big conversations that were going on on Twitter and Facebook uh, yeah. in this last month. So uh, I, I think us weighing in on it might bring a, di- you know, a different perspective or maybe even the same perspective that, you know, the listeners might have. Um, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we dive into the first topic here? So I think me and you and uh, actually I, I did see a lot of people over Twitter talking about this. So this is kind of a community topic. Um, they were talking about the opening scene of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And I do I do not have the information right here, but I believe it was from one of the interviews, whether it was Empire podcast or, or one of those where Colin or J.A., so this is how great my news is at the moment. I'm kind of speculating. But one of those two said that um, the opening of Jurassic World Fallen Ki- uh, Kingdom takes place directly after Jurassic World. And that was not very apparent to me. And and they said it takes weeks or months. So very short span of time after Jurassic World. Um, I don't know. Did you get that sense from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? No. Well, all right. First caveat. Hey, Brad, guess what? What? I worked on Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this is the first time I've talked to you like since the movie came out, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited. Like I got my screen credit like in a Jurassic film. So uh, I'm pretty stoked about that. And like, I, that's so true. I have been waiting for like so long to talk to you about this movie. Like, <laughs> You guys would all be speculating and I just be like, oh, my gosh, I can't wait. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know. I've been I've been dying to talk to you. So this is uh, this is great. So this is one of those things that people are like, what is going on here? Because it does not show or represent weeks or months. It represents years. You know, the three because initially um, the synopsis actually came out and it created an uproar because it said four years after Jurassic World. And people were like, well, that's not the case ever. It's always in, you know, in sync with the amount of time in between the films. Like they've all been a certain amount of time and it doesn't like take place a year in the future or a year in the past or anything like that. So that freaked everybody out. But then Colin Trevorrow corrected that. He said it's three years. And then now we get this news that it's the beginning of the movie, at least until the Mosasaurus, you know, escapes and then it cuts to the news segment, uh, the BBC News. So that portion before that news segment all takes place weeks or months later. So w- what's your take on that? All right. Well, yeah. Okay. So timeline. So you have these guys in the bottom of the lagoon, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I don't care where the lagoon is at. Doesn't matter. Yeah. No. Uh, aside aside from that. Yeah. So, yeah. Aside from that, it doesn't matter where this thing is at. And and honestly, like to me. So here's the thing. I felt like the amount of destruction to the monorail was very weird no matter what the time frame is and and so here's my thing with the monorail I, the 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 visitor center or the innovation center makes sense that there were like weeds and vines growing all over it cuz rainforests and like and natural habitats like that are going to start to take over man-made objects really quickly if they're not maintained right but the monorail being down everywhere um, by the main gate in the in the lagoon was did the was the mosasaur like just breaching and just <laughs> ramming into this thing um and the same with the one by the main gate like if a brachiosaur wasn't walking into the monorail uh before the closure of Jurassic World what made it decide to walk into the monorail after like it doesn't make sense like a, a brachiosaur is big but so is a monorail thing a brachiosaur is just going to walk it, it's Up not going to gonna it. run in no right. yeah like it's just gonna try to find a way around it, or you would build a monorail tall enough for it to go under it. Yeah. Or like, th- who knows just... why that thing was derailed? Like it was derailed on the track there, right? And yeah. And then like... the track was missing over the lagoon. That yeah, that does not to me describe weeks or months. Right. Not okay. at all. And so okay. So what's the official word that of when the beginning thing starts? What's the official like from the director word? 
that's what I'm saying. He says it's weeks or months. Uh, you know, that's that's it. Months that, totally makes sense to me because on the side from the monorail, that opening sequence, like when an animal like the Indominus falls into the water, one, it's it's main muscle tissue and skin and all that's going to be picked apart by um, probably the Mosasaur, I'd imagine, right? But it was obviously just laying at the bottom of the um, of the water. And if you've ever seen like a Nat, a Nat Geo like thing or whatever, bones get picked clean in a matter of like, yeah, it's got to be weeks, right? Like bones get picked clean by parasites and, and underwater, like uh, not insects, but like crustaceans and stuff. Mm-hmm. It makes sense to me why the Indominus uh, was picked clean. But the idea of like, oh, whatever is down here is dead by now. Well, not really, man. Reptiles can last a long time without food. And that's what the Mosasaur is. And if they've been feeding it sharks, like, 10 times a day like i'm sure it can live off its fat stores for quite some time so i don't know it didn't make sense but does it matter it was like the best opening sequence of any <laughs> jurassic film which i mean don't get me wrong the original from the first movie is really thrilling but man this one was awesome yeah yeah and when you're when you're watching it it's not occurring to you whether it's you know a few days weeks months years or well, that's what i'm assuming i'm just going straight in and i'm like Okay, it's been it's been three years, right? That's how long it's been. Everything's decayed. Uh, there's a lot of overgrowth. The monorail is missing. The guy literally says anything down here would be dead by now. So the, I'm thinking, okay, it's been years. It's been three years, and they're gonna go on this mission for some reason in the dark, <laughs> in the rain, in the worst possible conditions. But um, you know, besides the point. But I definitely thought years, and then it kind of blew my mind to hear that it was just weeks or months later. I, I don't understand the logic um, behind directors and producers. Um, I, I don't know, it's spewing out facts and information about the movies after the fact. That kind of bugs me. I don't know how well, you feel on that, but it definitely bugs me to hear things like this and kind of. Uh, retroactively changing things or, or or doing that kind of thing after the fact, after it's been released. Okay. And that irks me too. As far as I'm concerned, if it's not in your movie, it's not anything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that Brachiosaur being the original one we saw in the first movie, nope, don't buy it, don't care. It doesn't matter. It's just a Brachiosaur. Is that Peter Parker in Iron Man 2? Doesn't <laughs> matter. No, like the only people that yeah. care are just people that want this – really tight knit uh, continuity where everything matters in some way. And that's why star Wars is a giant galaxy that feels so incredibly small. And everyone is upset about episode eight in some random way. Um, No, like just, if you want something to be true, put it in your movie. Yeah. I mean, that stuff does work for star Wars and yes, it kind of, you know, pushes people over the edge at times, but it works in that universe where it is a giant universe of things you can connect and stuff like that. This one, it's very, it's a very tight knit like story. There's not a lot of places to expand, and I don't know when you just put in those those layers of things after the fact, it kind of bugs me. Some things I'm okay with, like I can sort of like after the fact be like, okay, sure that was the Brachiosaurus, but there's nothing that really tells me that in the movie aside from it just being a Brachiosaurus, like you said. Um, there was a few things throughout the movie that, that they've kind of retroactively said, and, and that's fine. But, like, I don't know. It just kind of irks me when people do that, not just in this franchise, but all franchises. And and now that everybody is so active and involved, you know, with their communities, like the directors and the people that make these films, uh, they're so active with the communities, like Colin is, it just they can't help but just like spew out these facts, and I, that's good on him. I really like the fact that he is involved, but um, I don't know. Some of that stuff kind of bugs me. I can't get over it. It's I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of I'm hit or miss with it. Like, um, I have like really unpopular opinions about even like um, expanded universe stuff that's happening right now. Um, you know, I while Trevoro is in charge of the franchise and he's kind of like the front man of it all. Um, who's to say that really any of the stuff we're enjoying right now, like DPG or, um, you know, the Mizrani website, that's all canon now. And I think that's great, but I think that, I feel like that's more or less under the Trevor reign, I guess, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just, I hate to see when these things kind of get backed into a corner because of like the stories that they're trying to tell at these studios. And then it's like, Someone's just going to – and just like Disney did with 
the expanded universe, right? Someone just cause someone easily can come along and be like, well, that stuff doesn't fit anymore, so it's not canon. And then people have invested um, their their time and energy trying to follow a canon. I'm not I'm not harping on the creators. Like they're definitely doing an awesome job at what they're doing, and I, I'm assuming they're getting paid to do it, and they're giving us a lot of entertainment. I just would hate to see fans in five, ten years be really let down by the fact that Hollywood has changed its mind and now all of a sudden that stuff is out. I don't know what the contingencies are there. Um, I'm obviously speaking about something that I'm not a part of or, or really know. Um, but I hope that, you know, all these things that they're saying are canon, whether it's the DPG or Colin or JA tweeting things out or, um, you know, Jeff Goldblum saying things. It's like, I, I hope that stuff is canon forever, but there's no promise, I don't think, unless there's a contract I'm unaware of. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's the problem is trying to have an answer for everything. I don't think you need to have an answer. He, I mean, he's he's being really gracious and responding to everybody with all these crazy questions that we're all, you know, throwing out there online. But uh, I don't know. Oh, Leave some Collins. things to mystery in a way. That's what I'm thinking because I don't need an answer to every absolute detail of the film i kind of like to guess and to kind of project and, and think about things for the future and not just be like oh answered solved it's all it's all solved we don't have any yeah, more questions no and i don't i don't need or want an answer for everything either like uh, first of all let me say colin is like awesome man like we could not have a better yeah. guy in hollywood yeah, like no, attached I agree. to this franchise like he's he talks to the fans on a daily basis it feels like you don't get that with anybody else um and i think because you know, one Spielberg being of a different uh, generation of 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 storytellers, um, and you know, just being a different generation of human being in general, right? Like, Spiel, who I don't think anybody would really expect Spielberg to like <laughs> all of a sudden pick up social media and be like, yeah, buddy, no. buddy with everybody. But like, Colin is pulling it off, and he's doing a really good job. Um, yeah, no, this yeah, is in no like, way I don't like need answers for everything. Yeah, this is in no way like you know a slight on him or anything. I'm just saying like. I just don't love when him or other directors in general just give us facts after the fact. Like you said, if it if it is necessary to the story, have it in the movie because we don't need those things explained after the fact. That's what I'm saying. If Or if it is big enough, put it in a book or do something like that. You know, uh, I personally love um, the Star Wars universe and the entire expanded uh, canon and everything that they've got going on. I've, I've been reading all the books and the comics and the video games that are all part of the canon. I love that. But, you know, include it in some story. Don't just put it on Twitter or, or so, an interview on a podcast. So you're like a huge Star Wars fan, which admittedly I'm, I'm not. I like the movies for what they are, and I, I watch them probably once a year, um, mm. you know, if, if that. But are you bummed that Disney came in and just said the last 20 years of expanded universe doesn't count anymore? Like, does that bother you as a fan? Cause I feel like no, as a huge fan, I feel like that might bother me with Jurassic. If all of a sudden in 10 years, it was like the DPG isn't a thing unless it was a straight reboot, right? Like if we're just straight up rebooting the franchise, <laughs> then sure. But like, you know, yeah. I want the D I want the DPG now to count forever. Not, Mm -hmm. be turned yeah, over yeah. because it doesn't fit with a story that we're trying to tell in 10 years. Yeah, no, I, I was not into the expanded universe back then because by the time I came around the Star Wars, it was like 1990. So there was already, you know, basically almost 30 years of content. And I'm, I'm not catching up. You know, there's no chance I'm going to read all the books at that point when all I'm right, like, yeah, that's you know. So I didn't even give the expanded universe a chance until – this new reboot. And when I saw that hard reboot, I was like, yes, all right, awesome. That's really cool. Um, it's slightly different for us because we didn't have this expanded universe prior to now. Um, right. You know, there was nothing aside from like some small like Jurassic Park 3 books that really nobody considers canon. And maybe the, the game, which we sort of considered canon until it was not, you know, like you had said. So yeah. that's what it comes down to. And like you said, I hope – None of this great stuff that's being produced gets erased in some way or they have to delete a blog post on the DPG site because it doesn't, you know, interact with something that's happening in the future or whatever. Um, I don't know. It, it's just a – it can be a mess at times, but I like all the extra information, stuff like the DPG and Mizrani Global and the, the evolution of Claire. Keep it canon. 
don't put it on Twitter. That's what I'm. Uh, that's what comes down to for me. And as far as that opening <laughs> scene goes, um, it, it makes no sense to me to have it um, months or weeks. Uh, you know, make it years. It's fine. I get that they're trying to um, get the Indominus Rex bone, and that makes sense to get it like weeks after Jurassic World. Um, for some reason, he needed that bone, even though he took all the DNA with him already. But um, that's well, also besides the point. I don't know. Does but... he take the Does he take the bone because it's it's almost like I feel like well, no, he would have had to have had a a, a successful sample of Indominus in a vial somewhere, right? I just feel like it's easy to take the bone, right? Because it's almost like it's like your life work compacted into this this vial, but he would have had to have had the correct formula somewhere else. I don't, I don't know, but this is the same argument that people make with like, why save the dinosaurs when you can just make new ones I, because there wouldn't be a movie. That's why like, yeah, well, there, there at least be a movie if that was the case, at least that argument I can get on because you don't want to just like kill all these animals just to make new ones. If they are animals, they are living and breathing. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to kill them off, but yeah, I don't know. It, it, it makes it kind of convoluted to explain. It's like, uh, you know, I still find people that have no idea that, um, the temple of doom takes place before Raiders of the Lost Ark. And that's yeah. like, you know, that's like a, a weird thing that you don't necessarily pick up on right away. I mean, I, I think it has the dates in there, but if you're not actively checking the dates of, you know, the movies, uh, while you're sitting there watching them, you don't, you don't have any idea, but, uh, people are still finding out about that. Do you think, do you think that it needs to be weeks after Jurassic world to per, to perpetuate the idea that these animals aren't created in a matter of days or weeks? So does he get the Indominus bone to start the Indoraptor and yes, this is supposed to. OK, so this is supposed to tell you that the Indoraptor took years to make, which are, are we talking? We are talking spoilers in this podcast. Oh, right? yeah. Like, yeah. OK, yeah. so leading up to this kind of ties in with the Maisie clone idea. People are like under the impression that because everyone's like, well, Maisie's so young. It's like, but so that doesn't. She, and so people are like, well, that doesn't line up with with Hammond. And no, yeah, else. it's like, well, you're under the assumption that Maisie is the first of her like is Maisie is the first attempt like I'm under the impression that Maisie is like version 10 you know what I'm saying yeah like, and that there's like not to get too dark but there's a bunch of uh failed attempts failed, yeah. failed attempts right <laughs> and and we you know and getting and, and we can you know this this goes into a well we've had this conversation this goes into a pro-life pro-choice uh debate uh but like I, I don't assume that Maisie is, as we see her in the movie, is the one and only version of Maisie. I feel like there are plenty of, fa I feel like she's the first successful version, but I feel like there's plenty of failed attempts, which is what caused that rift between Hammond and Lockwood. So yeah. that's just my opinion. And this is a, this is a story that I want, like completely make it a book. I really hope Colin doesn't say like, oh, well, you know, they, they made her many years later or whatever, <laughs> like. Don't give me that. Just give me the book because I assume, like like you're saying, that there's many failed attempts and maybe, you know, the fallout of the two of them was not over the creating of the clone. It was over the the concept or the the ideals and the morals or the morals, um, not morals, uh, morals of doing such a thing, not necessarily I, actually doing the act. It's my opinion. And I, it's my opinion that I think the the argument would be Hammond and Lockwood having a fallout over the fact that he was that Lockwood was creating a sent, a sentient being. Dinosaurs, as far as we know, Ooh. have no self, have like no sense of self. Um, like most animals today don't have they're not sentient. They're they're just animals and they they serve one purpose, which is to uh reproduce and then that's really it. Humans and I believe like apes and I think dolphins, uh it, it, we we're sentient. We understand the sense of self. And so I think what Hammond was doing, creating non-sentient beings, Hammond had a, a line of thought where making a human was crossing a line, right? Like you're making something that that should have a choice whether or not it lives or dies. Where Hammond was just was making, I mean, big birds, right? Like yeah. that's that birds aren't sentient. So I, I think for me, that's where 
that's where that argument comes into play. Um, it's so interesting, though, the fact that, you know, Hammond is on the side of not making human clones, but like his intro video for like investors and people at the park is yeah, literally just him. him clone, yeah. yeah, him being cloned over and over again. So, you know what? You got <laughs> to ex- explain cloning to the people in the 90s, man. We, we just yeah. didn't get it. I just I, I want to see. I want to see. You ever seen the um uh the Winnebago man? It, no, it's no. like it's one of the like original viral videos. Uh, it's like a handheld, basically uh, kind of shot like a commercial for a Winnebago, and this guy is just constantly messing up his script. And he wrote the script. He's he's messing it up like crazy. He just cannot cannot get it right, and he's he's cursing and all that. So it's it's hilarious. Um, check that out if you haven't seen it. But um, I want to get like that <laughs> with John Hammond. Like why? Why are you having me do this? I'm completely against human clones. Don't make me do this. And he's like, all right, hello, John. Hello, 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 John. Hello. He just He's it's, just like really frustrated with the fact that he has that, to make it. It's funny that you bring that up because that entire presentation, that is for nothing. That serves no purpose except to explain to Joe Schmo in the 90s what cloning is. Like, like, like Alan Grant doesn't understand what cloning is. He's He's a scientist. He gets it. Like, all all they had to do oh, yeah. was say to him like hey we're, we cloned dinosaurs from birds and frogs and he'd be like yep that makes sense like i believe that could happen yeah. well, but the whole presentation is really just to explain to the audience what how this whole movie is, is logical and, and and can make sense in a science fiction way but, yeah well i like um, how it fits into the canon in that sense it's like oh this is a theme park and this is the type of thing you would see at a theme park as well and he's talking about the orchestration and all that stuff and and to me, that's like where guests. I know a lot of people say it's an investor only presentation, but I don't see it that way. It's something I feel like the entire guests uh, for the park would would go to visit. Um, but uh, yeah, oh, I, li- yeah. I love that thing. Who says it's just an investor thing? A, Is that a, a lot thing? of a lot of people. A lot of people are out there saying they think it's just an investor presentation. That this is not anything uh, that would have been done, you know, every day. No, it's told. He even says the video you're about to see is like going to have a better music and it's going to yeah. have uh, a whole soundtrack and score and like real video, like better animations. As he's like, it's all temporary. It's all temporary. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so this is like, this is yeah. like when I go to Disney World and I go to the uh, Walt Disney. There's a there's a Walt Disney Museum inside of Disney World. You can go visit it. Yeah. No one goes in there. It's a great place to catch some AC if you. Uh, you know, pro tip, it's not crowded yeah. Um, because people don't care too much about the history. But that's what I was under the impression was like you were going to go to Jurassic Park and this was just going to be one of the rides. Well, side point to our side point to our side point uh, at like at Universal Studios, they need to have like a carousel of progress that they have at Disney where uh, Disney World where, you know, you kind of go through the ages and you look at the family as they've changed. That's what that ride is in Jurassic Park. They need to have that in Islands of Adventure or some one of their 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 new park that they ever open. I would love to ride that. And I know people are probably like, it's boring. You're just going to look at sets and stuff. Like, But that's what I want. <laughs> I want to go would, on that tour. I want to see awesome. that video. I want to see John Hammond. I want to see, or maybe not John Hammond at this point, because you need to have you know a guy, a physical actor up there doing the spiel and then walking through. You have animatronics with the, the people in the lab. And, oh, man, it would be so great. I would like to see the rest of the tour. Because the jerks that, uh, you know, Alan and and Ian, you know, lifting up the gates, like, what kind of theme park attendant are you? Just breaking the (laughs) the bars that there's no way that any human could possibly do. Yeah. Um, Well, this is all besides the point. Uh, We we we, go on tangents. I'm looking at the list. We have strayed way far from our Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, let's just wrap it up on that. That's our feelings on the opening scene. It, uh, yeah. That's what it is. So moving on here, uh, some news uh, broke recently at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Um, so were, were you following along with all the uh, events out there from Mattel? Uh, I was following along in like tweet format. I didn't watch oh, yeah. any videos or the panels or anything. Um, I would actually love to go back and watch this stuff, but I feel like I've got the highlights. Like, So I don't – do I really need to go watch them – talk about things I don't, I don't know um i'm really excited though holy crap there's a lot of cool stuff coming oh yeah i know I, and it, yeah like you i was doing the same thing just catching it as people were tweeting about it and mattel was tweeting and and you know many people that were attending were, were giving out the information 
But um, yeah, I, let's start. I want to start with the most controversial one um, because a lot of people are up in arms about six inch toys um, because currently the human figures that we have uh, are 3.75 and the dinosaurs are all to scale with them. The vehicles are to scale. There, are, there is, I think, one playset as of right now. Um, I don't know if was that ever released. I I don't think I've the, seen anybody was, own it. The Mosasaur playset? No. Uh, oh no, that was that's supposed to be coming. Or oh wait, are canceled? you talking about, are you talking about the Baryonyx? Baryonyx playset? one. Yeah, I don't know if okay. I've ever seen anybody own that. Have you? Well, I ordered one off Amazon, and apparently it's sitting at my parents. Oh, okay. Knows? All right, cool. Who cool. knows? Maybe it was fake. <laughs> I have no idea. Out. I've never it, seen, like, a, a actual picture of one aside from, like, the promo images. It, so it was shipped and sold by Amazon. So I'm hoping yeah. that this is, like, a real thing. But who, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Well, yeah, I mean, those... I, I, I'm not, I haven't visited my parents in a while, and I don't think I'm getting out there for a month. So <laughs> yeah. we're going to find out. <laughs> Well, those human figures, the 3.75 uh, scale, are, are are all all in line with the everything else, all the figures, the gyrosphere, um, the vehicles, and all that stuff. Yep, so they're great. The six inch line comes along, and we have Owen, we have Blue, we have Malcolm. They're very um, articulate characters, and you can move everything around. There are much better uh, sculpts on them and paint jobs. So, uh, for comparison, if you uh, collect Star Wars toys, um, the three point seven fives are like the the main items that you can get that fit it with. Like I said, all the items, uh, the the aliens, the spaceships, and all that. But then there is the black series, which I believe is the six inch uh, figure. They're they're much they're like twenty dollars versus like the seven to eight dollar range, um, and they're they're a, a whole lot better. They're they're a way better figure comparatively because these three point seven fives are are small, smaller than the original Kenner stuff, and they're not they're not always the best looking. Uh, the faces are a little wonky at times. The paint jobs are a little weird. Um, but they're great. Like these Mattel ones have been really great. I have no issue with these ones. Um, but people are saying that when you introduce the six inch line, it's, it, uh, gives them a reason to not make more 3.75s and the scale gets all thrown off. And then we don't get play sets and stuff like that. I really, I'm on the side of, I don't think that's the case. Six inch is just a great addition to the line. Um, it's not going to mess up anything. They already have their plans. We've seen a lot of the stuff that's coming and I don't think it's going to mess anything up because that is their main line, the 3.75. Everything's to scale with that aside from like the Colossal T-Rex and a few other things, but that's their main line. So, so what are your thoughts on the, the six inch, uh, line in respect to the 3.75? My thoughts are give the people what they want. If if Mattel if Hasbro is having great success with the six inch Star Wars lines, why wouldn't Mattel take what is arguably their Star Wars now and give people a six inch figure? Like, look, here's the thing: I don't necessarily love the three point seven five inch figures because, darn it, I have like fifty or a hundred <laughs> five inch Kenner figures. Am I bummed that I'm kind of now starting over with three point seven five inch figures? Yes. But here's the thing. If Jurassic is now to last as we've seen the movie, if Jurassic is supposed to last for essentially can be spun off now forever. Um yeah, just just let people have whatever products they want. If you don't want this, guess what? You don't have to buy it. No one's yeah. saying that we that we have to have everything in this line. Like I'm not getting everything. I'm getting things to kind of fill holes in in my Kenner line. Um, you know that I have and and the humans. I asked Mattel to make humans. I'm speaking with my wallet. I'm buying the 3.75 inch figures because who knows in 20 years if they keep producing human figures, maybe I'll have more Mattel humans than I do Kenner figures. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but people obviously want humans and cars and we got plenty of that. So what they're making three, six inch figures, let them test the water, let them see what happens. Like worst case scenario, worst case scenario, people get a really cool Owen in blue and then they don't sell more and they never make more. It's not, it's really not a big deal. I don't get it. I know a lot of people are are saying that it has ruined the star Wars line. Um, I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm no toy expert. I know a lot of people out there really follow along with everything a lot more. But um, 
I, I have enjoyed the Star Wars line, except for the 3.75s, to be honest. And I, I initially was collecting a bunch of them when uh, The Force Awakens came out. And then I got to the point where I'm like, these things are so, you know, small and I can't. They're, they're, they seem breakable. They can't hold on to their pieces, uh, you know, whether it's a staff or a lightsaber or something. Um, so it, it's very frail and fragile, and I don't like those smaller figures. And, I mean, the same applies for these, uh, you know, Jurassic ones. I don't love the size. I wish it was more like the Kenner ones. But, um, you know, comes here comes along a six-inch line that, to me, is like a collector's line. It's a, a rare thing. You don't get a ton of stuff. You get a select amount of items. And in this case, we get Owen Blue and Malcolm, and they look pretty great. I don't love the Malcolm figure. I got to say, it doesn't look too, too great to me, but um, the Owen looks fantastic. The the Blue currently has like a giraffe neck. It's a little too long. It's a little too long. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I don't I don't see why this would ruin the idea. I mean, look, it's not like they're – they haven't flooded the market with a bunch of three, you know, 3.75-inch figures. We literally we have like, what, four Owens and two Claires and um, – uh, um, uh, what's his a Wheatley? If you can get your hands on him, like <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like it's not like there's yeah. a ton of characters out there right now for this either. So, I, I guess I don't really see the complaints. the The reason I like 3.75 is because everything else fits around it. Um, if you, yeah, these are these are one offs. Just like I think the Colossal T Rex is a one off. Like the Colossal T Rex doesn't fit with anything except for now maybe the six inch figure. <laughs> um, but the Colossal T Rex doesn't fit with anything. It's a fun one off. Just have fun. Don't. Yeah. We're, we're getting something we've been asking for for over 15 years. People just relax. Have fun. Yeah. And I've much more uh, appreciated like the six inch uh, Luke Skywalker and Ray and K2SO. All those ones. I've gotten those because they're way better made than the 3.75s. And I, I, I think that'll happen here. And it's not going to stop people. Uh, we're we're super diehards. We're going to still get these little ones and they're going to stay in, in uh, line with these dinosaurs. They're not going to stray away from that. Uh, we, we have that one play set so far. We don't, I don't think we have, there's a few different like little piece play sets, but not really. There's like, it like comes with like one thing like uh yeah. Maisie. I think that she comes with like a dinosaur head. Um, Oh, I don't skull. know. Does she? Cause I can't find one. I believe. Yeah. I believe she comes with like a T-Rex <laughs> uh, fossil, um, and there's a few others. I think you just said the Mosasaurus comes with something, I, I believe. But, um, yeah, we don't have a lot of stuff. And it's funny because as everybody was arguing about, like, oh, we're not going to get any more play sets and stuff like that. Do you see any of this stuff coming? Star Wars, which everybody said it ruined the Star Wars line, literally just announced a bunch of play sets that are coming. And they're awesome. So I don't see what the big deal is. I think it's going to be fine. I don't, I don't think either. anybody has anything to worry about when it comes to 6-inch versus... The other size i think what people really need to be concerned about is the fact that um it, it forget the six inch the the fact that they announced like what 16 is it new dinosaurs for 2019 <laughs> or something something I, I don't know yeah did they say anything about new human characters like at all except for these six inches like well people, franklin right he was the only one that was off in the distance in the background with claire okay but people should be like concerned that there's not more of Fallen Kingdom characters. People should be concerned that there's not more Jurassic World characters. People should be concerned that there's not more classic characters coming. Like, 16 new new species, awesome, great, thank you. We know that the dinosaurs sell really well, but Jurassic is about humans and dinosaurs together. And I feel like not having good human figures is kind of what, well, that and the scale, is what just lost it for me when it came to uh, Jurassic Park 3 figures. Mm -hmm. And then... Not a single human, okay, Owen, I guess, for Jurassic World, but um, yeah, that, that was a compl- really that was a com- <laughs> that was a complete disaster. Yeah, that final that final run by by Hasbro, like it was it was terrible. Um, so no. I feel like really we should be more concerned that there's not any announcements for new humans over dinosaurs. We have so many dinosaurs now; it's ridiculous. Yeah, when it comes to that like Jurassic World line, that was a mess because there wasn't just three point seven five and six; it was like. Oh, it was all a over. Wild all range over. Of, of sizes and things that just didn't line up with Kenner. And that's what we all complained about is none of this stuff interacts with what we already have. Um, and, I mean, I have it, I've gotten used to it, you know, over time. I think some of it's not as bad as we made it out to be, but there is a lot of bad stuff in that line. But, um, you know, it's fine. It looks fine on my shelf right now. It's not really bugging me that much. But um, the stuff that we're getting now is way better 
I don't think we have anything to worry about. And like you said, there's a ton of dinosaurs coming. I hope that there's humans that they're just like, okay, well, we'll just release them when, when the time comes. Like, for instance, that, that one that you got recently, you did the video for on YouTube, that, like, mercenary. I was like, I didn't even know that was coming. Like, all of a sudden, there's this mercenary in your hands. And I'm like, well, that's cool. Like, we get a new one. Uh, they keep releasing these things. I just didn't realize that they were coming. Like, Franklin. Um, so that's great. I know, um, you know, we have a bunch already. But um, has anybody – I don't think Z has been released. No, I don't think Z is out there. Um, I can't find a Wheatley – uh, I did get the series two Claire, uh, recently. I don't have that. No. Um, let's see. It, it, I think what is frustrating is the fact that it, maybe we you know, cause we've seen the past, right? We've seen Hasbro completely abandon humans and vehicles and just sell dinosaurs to hit specific price points. And I think that's kind of got everyone a little bit scared. Um, Mattel seems to be aggressively going after this franchise, so I'm not too worried. I think they are going to kind of have to, I, I think in the long run, I'm predicting that they are going to have to package humans in with bigger dinosaurs. Um, because I think if you package them in with things like the Packy or not the Packy, the, uh, Stiggy Moloch, um, the Stiggy, to me, that felt like taking a fairly inexpensive Stiggy and cranking up the price a little bit. I think if you package in humans with like, um, the legacy size T-Rex or the attack uh, action attack line, I think you don't, maybe don't notice that price increase as much. Um, I am worried that, that the, the self uh, packaged humans are going to eventually kind of um, mm-hmm. probably have to like, just by sheer nature of the market, they're going to have to kind of go by the wayside. Well, um, didn't that, so I feel like that was sort of the case with like Kenner and stuff. By the time like other waves rolled around, you you packaged them with different vehicles and different little sets and things. So that's kind of what I, I would hope to see, you know, like yeah. uh, more vehicles, like little things like like uh, motorcycles and, and quads or, you know, four, uh, four by fours and different things. Yeah, actually, um, I'm trying to think. The only ones I can think of are like Nick Van Owen with the high hide and then Roland Tembo with the uh, like motorcycle that took the Pachycephalosaur. Um, those are really was, neat. And that's that actually Roland what they're. Or was that uh, Carter? It was, no, it was Roland. It was Roland. Oh, okay. oh, Carter came with a motorcycle. Yeah, he came with a motorcycle. I know Roland there was a. Came with, uh, Roland some... came with like a three wheeler. I have the. Yeah, I have this like. Um, it's like a motorcycle that disconnects with like a little sidecar that shoots a gun, um, shoots a. a capture thing i don't remember who it came with but um Hmm. stuff like that like interesting weird stuff like that like because that that vehicle never seen in a movie but it it has like dinosaur bones strapped to the 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 wheel wells and stuff like that it's so awesome you have that bike yeah i don't think i have that bike. that's so that's the evil raider um, yeah 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 i don't think that came with a guy because that guy came with a baby baryonyx the guy in the box i think you got that car separate that was like that's yeah, the kind ahead. of thing that I would like to see is like, you know, strap like not not another Owen. Please don't give me another Owen. Give us like, you know, like the evil Raiders, something like that, like new characters, new guys. Even just call them ACU. I don't care. Or or mercenaries. That's fine. Oh, but if they want to do a line of ACU troopers, I'm totally cool. I would love to see. Um, I think it's great that they gave us the classic Jurassic Park Jeep, but I would love to see a Jurassic World Jeep in the style of like what we got in Evolution. Those were really cool, like dune buggy jeep kind of things yeah um it's just weird because like that jeep in the line because of its size and because of its it's um mainly because it's kind of like it's an all-around good vehicle it kind of makes me sad that it's a jurassic park classic um and not a jurassic world because the jurassic world vehicles we have are all like you know the big gyrosphere shooter and the um yeah in the submarine and the the other uh there's like the flatbed truck and stuff they're they're all really big which is great but Where's like the, the little four wheeler, you know, yeah, like where, exactly. where's the classic four wheeler, right? Like, yeah, they, they can make stuff up. They don't have to stick within the, the confines of the films as far as I'm concerned. Well, that's what I feel like creators and stuff like, uh, I, I remember Colin recently said like he wanted to change the franchise and create a, a, uh, you know, a storyline that went through all three movies with the same characters and stuff like that. That's fine. That's good. We don't necessarily need that as, um, you know, toy collectors and, and even movies, they don't give us enough enough credit as audience members um, because stuff like the toys, like Jaws Jackson and uh, Harpoon Harrison and like guys like that, if you give them a cool name like that, they become one of your favorite toys. Like I love those characters. Yeah, totally. T-Rex Turner, like all those awesome 
like crazy names that I loved and they were just as big as my Ian Malcolm or my Muldoon or, or whoever. Like they were just as like mainstays in my toy playing. Yeah, like it, it, it you give them characters and they, they you give them cool names and you give them like a job to do, right? Like mm-hmm. the dino trackers. Never did I think on as I'm as a kid I'm watching Jurassic Park, never did I think like, oh, there's like a there's a not a secret, but there's there's like a, a band of people on this island that work with Hammond to like keep these animals under control. I knew there was Muldoon, right? But to think yeah. that like Muldoon has like subordinates, you know, aside from the guys at the beginning of, of the first film that are just loading dinosaurs in, but those those were the dino trackers essentially, right? Like yeah. that's really cool. They came up with new action figures, gave them names, gave them jobs, and all of a sudden they were part of the world. It was great. They should They're, do that. They, they should yeah. do it again. They're identifiable. They're not just like random mercenary number one, number two. Like that's kind of what we got have, have it happening right now with, you know, that mercenary you have, I think is dressed in all black. And then there's another one that's just not that identifiable. He's just like normal mercenary guy. He's more of actually, he's kind of more in line with like the, uh, which one was it? Uh, Harpoon Harrison. Uh, with the cut off shirt, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was one of my favorites. He's got that backwards hat, like, but he's got something that's identifiable. Um, make them individual. Don't make them all uniform. In a way, uh, I like that they have identities, and that's maybe you know this is all besides the point. But I think that is something uh, they should do. Just make them up. Don't don't stick and adhere to characters we already know. I don't need nine Owens. Yeah, um, you know, just to that point, there's a whole list of ACU trackers that get killed by the indominus in the last movie just give them one of those names make it a cool homage i don't know i don't know what they have the rights to do like as far yeah. as you know the first the the last jurassic world movie but um you know yeah just like yeah mercenary you're right Mer- like oh mercenary number four that's a bummer right like it would have been cool to get a name and a backstory and yeah you know, they're something. all called mercenary who cares it's just like some right. random yeah. guy that just gets eaten but if, if you name him jaws jackson that's a guy I'm like, he needs to stay alive. <laughs> like, he doesn't yeah. get eaten. He's not one of the sacrificial, you know, characters. That's what the mercenary's for. Right. And if he does die, it's tragic, right? Like, yeah. and it creates, yeah. yeah, it creates better stories as, because as, as you're playing with these toys, you're a storyteller and you're creating, like, everybody says that Jurassic, I think you have said, like, Jurassic World is like those cards come to life and stuff like that you're telling these stories with these figures and you don't want those figures to die you want them to survive every outbreak and every attack and all that stuff that's happening those guys the mercenaries you're just throwing them right down the mouth of the super colossal t-rex yeah when i first saw (laughs) jurassic world the 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 original jurassic world i was kind of bummed i was like "Ah, it wasn't what i thought my hype was maybe a little high um but as i kept coming around to the idea that they had taken these action figures, like, I mean, they took chaos effect action figures. They took dino tracker action figures. They took all those images from, um, the Kenner, like collector cards that were drawn by, uh, Brian Franzak. Like they took all that stuff from my childhood and put it into an action movie. And it was like, the more I thought about that, the more I was just like, holy crap. Like these are the stories that I told as a kid playing with these toys come to life. And I, I feel like Mattel actually has another opportunity to kind of maybe influence the franchise a little bit more than they already might be. Yeah, yeah I think that's a good point. Um, let's uh, talk about some of these options that we've seen. So I saw, I have not seen this. Have you seen that brown and like yellow Raptor? I, I saw it like in the, there was like a big diorama that they had um, with like a mountain and water and all kinds of stuff. Uh, there was like a brown and a yellow Raptor. I hadn't seen that before. Uh, no, and I, I'm not even sure about the photo you're talking yeah. about. I, I've it, seen the orange one in photos. Yeah, no, that one, I have that one too. I have that one here, but like this one is just a random one. Cause there's like, I have like nine or 10 Raptors already and I, I can't stop. I, I just bought another one. Uh, oh, dude, what is it called? Really... What are they called? The Destructo, Destructosaurs or Destructibles? Oh, what are they? Destruct- Destructos- so how's that Raptor mold? Is that, cause is that different? I- it, I don't have it. It's going to be oh. here in months, apparently. <laughs> okay. So, you, you, okay. Did you like order them like off Amazon, like the Demetrodon and the. Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah okay. Both of them. I got both of those. <laughs> so, the Destructoid Raptor looks like the, the Battle Damage Raptor from Walmart, which, by the way, yeah, is that's right. the best one. That is the definitive uh, blue, in my opinion. I don't know. It's so good. I think no, the best. So good. No, I think the best blue is the Story uh, Pack Blue with story Owen. Story Pack Blue? I think that one's pretty good. I think that I might know, be man. my favorite. There's, there's something about the battle one that, or the battle damage one that like looks to me specifically like, it, it looks exactly like a Jurassic 
it looks like a lost world raptor like with a blue paint job which is really what blue is she's she's got more of that original two movie design with like a different paint job um but yeah i don't know i i love that one i think it looks really good standing next to the owen action figure uh on my desk um yeah but But uh, i got them both right here now they're they're very very similar i would say that the the no the ridge on the nose is is a tad different on the um because the uh the story pack one i think is a jumper um Yes, so which the, I, no, don't, the ridge, I don't love the jumpers. I know you, do, yeah, you know you don't like them because the, the legs are not as poseable as you'd like and they kind of have well, one just, stance. They have one pose and it's down. Like, so, and that's fine. Yeah, but, you know. I guess that is a win for the uh, battle damage, but um, I think well, the detail is much finer and much nicer on the um, uh, story pack one. But Do you remember, do you remember when I close. said... Do you remember when I said on the top five lists that we did that I didn't need posability? Like I wanted like just things that were stuff. So yeah. here's the thing. I'm an idiot <laughs> and I retract all that previous statement because all my favorite ones from this line are the posable ones. Um, I just got the uh, classic size, uh, le- the legacy size T-Rex. As by, that, dude, that is by far my, uh, spoiler, that's my favorite one uh, from this line. <laughs> it's the smallest one. And if they wanted to make a thrash, uh, a, a thrash and throw uh size one that was exactly this functionality uh, on board um the the raptor that can turn its neck which is the battle damage one um on board like for whatever reason all these posable ones which i said i didn't want have become my favorite ones which is which is crazy and weird but well yeah i get it it makes a lot of sense because all your gallimimus can do something different to all your you know dimorphodons can can pose a tad different uh my because a lot of them are similar like like the stiggies and, and and some of the raptors and stuff so you want them to look different and pose differently so it makes a lot of sense to me i have i have a lot of my characters like up almost as high as you can like put their legs back so that they're like kind of like roaring to the sky like like up in the air and That's some awesome. of them are really low but those jumpers are what they are they're they're staying right there in the middle <laughs> Yeah, I gotcha. Um, so let's see. What else did Mattel so, well, talk about and or announce? Or wait, they, I'm sorry. Am I jumping ahead? No, no, no. They talked about my favorite dinosaur to be is the, the Brachiosaurus. Oh. Praise be. <laughs> um, so I, I was having a discussion. I, 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 have, I have a group of friends that I Facebook chat with um, pretty much on a daily basis. You know, friends that have, I've worked with and uh, have, mo- have moved on to other places. And... I sent them the photo of the woman standing in front of the uh, the black silhouette of the Brachiosaur with the human figure. Yeah. And for those that don't know, I'm 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 a I'm big into not just Jurassic, but I collect um I collect Hot Toys, uh, which are like uh, six scale figures, um, mainly Marvel because I, I work on a lot of the Marvel movies. Um, but I said, I they're like, so what's the big deal? Like, who cares? I'm like, you don't understand. They said it could not be done. And Mattel has found a way to package these items in unique uh, ways. Like the the colossal, super colossal was, uh, you know, the tail was disconnected and thing. And then the uh, Mosasaurus was packaged in a very unique way. So they're going to find a way to do this. And, you know, the Brachiosaurus is going to be huge. It's going to be giant. But they they they'll package it nicely. I'm 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 ready to see like how uniquely that thing's packaged because that's what people are wondering. Like, well, how are they going to release this thing? It's going to be giant. It has you know Hasbro. Uh, like it can't be done. It's too big. They won't sell. And Mattel comes in and says, "No, have you not seen the movies, guys? Life finds a way. We'll figure it out. We'll get it yeah. to you. Yeah. And, and we know that Aaron's going to want like five of them. So <laughs> all good. That's going to be amazing. I can't wait. I am so excited. That is one I know I've been like dying to have. I know there there is some Brachiosaurus that's out there that people have uh I think it's like some one that you can paint and It's and, on my it's like a model um, uh, yeah. Like Horizon I believe is the name of the company. Okay, I don't remember. Uh, yeah. I don't think, yeah, they they made them. They were very expensive back in the day. In fact, I think a lot of the ones that people get aren't even official horizon models i think they're um recasts and stuff but i mean whatever it's 25 years later like yeah you gotta do what you gotta do but they look um, awesome at least and and they uh, look hopefully, awesome. hopefully these look uh, you know just as good yeah i'm excited to have a brachiosaurus that because here's the thing you can go get realistic brachiosaur figures that look accurate size wise but they don't have that toy look to them and i think um and we're gonna talk about repaints i think a little bit later but like 
as much as I think repaints are great, I think cohesively when I'm when I'm just like I like having all my human figures to be kind of the same size. I like the idea that the toys are they look like toys. And so when they're put all together, yes, they all look like toys, but because they all look like toys, they all feel more real together. Does that, that's weird. I don't yeah, know. I get, that, I get it you. makes sense in my head. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like it's like watching a cartoon. Right. And then everything feels cohesive. And that's what the toys feel like to me. Not so. that Sukumimus. <laughs> the Sukumimus. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't feel cohesive to me. It doesn't. But <laughs> that's, the that I... almost feels like Hasbro, but um, I don't have it in person. So just judging it from pictures, it looks like one of the hybrid lines. But that's fine. I think it's it's fine. The more I see the Sukumimus toy and I see actual real photographs of it, I like it. Um, I like that it's big. Like it's like the Carnotaur size. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see. Uh, you know, yeah. who knows if I can ever find, you know, if I can find one, <laughs> um, let's see what else we have here. We have, um, I believe a sign of Ceratops was shown off. Um, but there's a, a little bit of an uproar because uh, look, I don't, I'm not like, I know I'm on a podcast that talks about dinosaurs all the time, but I don't know a lot of the differences between a lot of, uh, certain dinosaurs and like the Packy Rhinosaurus. There was a big uproar about like that in the movie and stuff like that, what it was supposed to be, a Sinoceratops, Pachyrhino. And the same qualifies here. I know people are saying it's, I think it was labeled Sinoceratops, um, but it it was a, it looks like a Pachyrhinosaurus. Well, you know, it's the internet, so we have to complain about something. Um, yeah. Here's my thought on it. If you really want a Sinoceratops, uh, go find the original Pachyrhinosaurus from the Jurassic Park 3D line. Uh, which is not a Pachyrhinosaurus; it's a Sinoceratops. <laughs> so, you know, if you're that if you're that PO'd about it, uh, go spend eighty bucks on a Pachyrhinosaurus uh, from 2013, I believe. Um, I mean, look, none of these toys are they're toys. They're not going to be scientifically accurate. They can't be. Yeah. Um, one, they they get to model feathers into them, so already they're not scientifically accurate. Um, if someone messed up on a horn, like. You know, I, whatever. Um, it's a bummer, but you just move on. I, I know a lot of people are talking about the kids and, uh, you know, teaching the kids the right thing. And um, also, like, doing it for the kids with, like, the 6-inch and the 3.75. I say that as a kid, I didn't care what I was playing with. Now, I know I talked about, like, you know, the Jaws Jacksons and all those kind of guys. And, and uh, I didn't, you know, I, I, didn't, I loved those guys. But I didn't care as a whole what characters or what toys or what franchise I was using. I had Batman in there. Um, now, it wasn't like a full-on Batman. He was like wearing some like, I don't know what he was wearing, like a, a jumpsuit. It was weird. Um, and I had like G.I. Joe's in there or I had literally like Pee Wee Herman, like whoever I could get. Those were the guys that I, that got eaten all the time, not my Jurassic guys. So um, that's what I'm saying is as a kid, you don't care. You literally don't care what you have you're just playing i know maybe some people nowadays maybe the kids today are like gonna hit you up on twitter and be like colin you're the worst but uh you know even though he didn't make the toys but <laughs> um, no, like he's been tasked with he's been now tasked with uh the responsibility of getting them to cover it up with tape like look fix, here's the fix thing. all the issues yeah fix, fix all the issues colin like you know colin you've, you haven't done enough um you know <laughs> it, like it's just ridiculous the, the guy the guy no, I'm not gonna say single handedly, but the guy resurrects uh, a franchise that's been dead for 15 years, right? And he does it in an awesome way. And yet, the guy's job is never done. Um, yeah. If you're worried about the kids not learning dinosaur names because of these toys, uh, one, if you're a kid, you don't care. Two, if you're an adult teaching kids about trying to be scientifically accurate about dinosaurs and using Jurassic as your uh, point of reference, you're already failing yeah. because. Almost everything in those movies is wrong, uh, right down to the original Raptors are far too big. Um, so it just it just yeah. doesn't matter. Like that, just have, have fun. That argument really bugs me because uh, I see it all the time on Twitter from people outside of the community, mostly um, just being like, "Well, how come we haven't fixed this yet? How come they still look like lizards and and not like birds and stuff? Where are the feathers?" And I see that so often, and and. The only thing I can say is, look, they explained it in Jurassic World. They explained it for those people who have that argument, um, that they're not scientifically accurate. And and we should know that already, that they're, they're, they're modified DNA. They're, they're not necessarily going to be accurate. Um, so that, that 
every time it comes up, it really bugs me. They explained it with, not only did they explain it with a, with a great conversation, they explain it with a conversation that is literally lifted from the original novel. Now it's tweaked a little bit, right. To fit Mm -hmm. with the current generation of Jurassic that we have in the franchise. Right. But yeah, that conversation happens in the Jurassic Park novel. Um, Hammond wants the dinosaurs to stay the same and uh, Wu wants to kill them all and make slower (laughs) dinosaurs because that's what people expect to see. And Hammond's like, no, you've created real dinosaurs. So it's kind of that same conversation um, that he has with, with Miss Ronnie, but it's, it's kind of opposite, right? Like, you know, um, well, you know, we've all seen the movie, but it's like, just let it go. Have fun. You know, just because something was labeled something when I was a kid, uh, doesn't mean that was the dinosaur that it became. So for instance, uh, Jurassic Park series two had a Utah Raptor. Um, it was yellow with black stripes or orange with black stripes or something, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, and the lost world came out with, uh, roaring velociraptors that were pretty much the same paint job. They were way bigger than the velociraptor toys yeah which already the velociraptors are are pretty much stretching it in size right and then these these roaring ones came out that were bigger than the velociraptors but they were labeled velociraptor now you know what those toys became those became younger utah raptors like kids are going to use their imagination it doesn't matter that this thing is labeled cyanoceratops on the box once it's out of the box it just doesn't matter yeah, like like those those raptors would have become the Indoraptor of the past, you know. Like 100%. I would have said, like, oh, the scientists made this one, and it's much bigger, it's much cooler, and, and that would have been the dinosaur that wreaked havoc and and wrecked all the other ones up. So, I, yeah, I I, I I think people are forgetting, um, you know, what's going on here because I, I actually that conversation, um, that I was involved in about the uh, size difference. Um, I, I whittled it down to, look, I didn't have play sets. I didn't have uh, the, the command compound. I didn't have the um, Lost World RV. I didn't have those things as a kid. I had a plastic box that was my Raptor pen that I it had this like um, interlocking lid that opened up. It was my Raptor pen. I had a giant air conditioning unit in my backyard for some reason. It was a big metal hunk of metal. That was my visitor center. Or no, no, that was one, I don't know, some building. I think the, um, what do you call it? The uh, castle from, um, oh, what is that? Uh, He-Man? Uh, what's it called? Castle Grayskull? Yeah, Castle Grayskull was my visitor center outside. Like, so, uh, oh yeah, and Barbie, uh, Barbie Dream House was my visitor center when I played in my basement. So, I made it up. We made it up. I did, you know, you make do with what you have. I don't necessarily need a pl- uh, play set that matches. You can do whatever you want. Kids have an imagination. That's what people, yeah. I think, adults are forgetting because we lose our imagination. Um, that, you know, you can imagine. You can do whatever you want as a kid. Yeah, we lose, you know, we lose our imagination. We lose uh, the sense that, you know, you know, we get locked into this idea of continuity, continuity. Everything has to match. Everything has to be the same. It's like, well, I like that to be the case, but that's not always going to be the case. And so what? They screwed up on a Sinoceratops. You know what they'll do? They'll just remake a Sinoceratops later and they'll call it Sinoceratops version two and everyone will be happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, the next one that we have here um, is the Amargosaurus. Am, am I saying that right? Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't know too much about this other than it's a small sauropod, right? With it's known to have like a spiky neck. Is that the, is that the thing with this? Exactly. One? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know too look. much about this dinosaur. It's it's not even a it's not even at all referenced in any other Jurassic content, is it? Uh, you know, I think it's in some of like um, like the apps and and stuff like that. I don't know. It's not in Jurassic World Evolution, is it? No, not, but no. It's, but it's not like I mean, it, I'm, no, I, no. It's not in any of the actual canon stuff um, that I know of. Um, but you know, cool. I don't care. It's another thing that's just like, that's an awesome looking dinosaur. Um, I, I don't know. They didn't show off the paint job. It was just like the silhouette as the well. Silhouette, yeah. Um, yeah. so I hope it's not along the lines of the Sukumimus because I think with something that's that crazy, you know, with a crazy fin down the back of like, almost like an Apatosaurus type dinosaur, it could go wild. Um, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Um, again, I don't know too much about this. Uh, I, I kind of feel like there's there's got to be some following for it because they put it up there with the Brachiosaurus, which everyone wants. Um, thought it was a weird thing to announce, but they also showed a Styracosaurus, yeah. uh, which I'm really excited about. Uh, 
that's not in any Jurassic lore either from what from what I'm aware of. I mean, other than video games, which let's put those aside. Um, yeah, so I, I really have no clue yeah. um, about that specific one. I'm excited to see what it looks like. I hope yeah. they pull it off. I'm I'm a little weirded out why some of them were just black silhouettes and some of them were like ZBrush models. Um, you know, who, who knows? Yeah, who knows what they were doing there. Uh, you know, if we were there, maybe we could tell. But um, I, I just thought everything that came out from Mattel looked pretty fantastic. I, I'm very excited for the future, and I think everything that we have already is pretty great. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm excited. Mattel's been killing it. Um, I, I, man, I cannot say enough good stuff about them. Except, you know, distribution to Canada could be a little better, guys. Well, that's what it that, seems like around the entire world. I know the UK is having a lot of issues with getting anything out there, really. Um, some, some, you know, sometimes, uh, wow, I just really stuttered there. Sometimes people send me, like, uh, pictures from, like, the stores that they're going to. Um, and it's, like, some of the weirdest stuff that I've ever seen. Like, I'm like, where is that? I've never seen that before, but it's, oh, it's out in the UK. It's like some weird item that just doesn't uh, correlate with Jurassic. I think I saw laser tag recently. I don't know what, what country that was from, but like, huh? Uh, what was the Jurassic laser tag? Why? I don't know. <laughs> um, I do know someone told me today that the uh, bulk barns out here have started carrying the Jurassic World uh, Pez dispensers. So I okay. will be trekking to a bulk barn ASAP. Yeah. Uh, to see if I can't hunt some of those down. Hopefully, I don't. Pet suspensers are what, like two bucks? Is that like, is that low? Oh, I, I have, yeah, I have no yeah. idea. Right, right. I, I, I bought re- one since I was a kid. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I don't know. I'm really excited for Mattel. I think they're doing a, a killer job, and uh, I can't wait to see what 2019 brings. Because are they promising 2019? Is that is that the thing? I think so. Yeah. I, I don't right. know. The, the 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 waves have been so inconsistent here. Who knows when the stuff's coming? Uh, I think are we getting a wave three too? I think is that two two thousand nineteen or is that this year? I have no idea. I, I feel like wave three's got to be the like the destructoid dinosaurs and stuff, right? Because that's not even due for like another like it says months wasn't, on Amazon. Wasn't that so. the uh, Toys R Us stuff? Ooh, I don't know. I think um, it was. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it was the Toys R Us stuff. We um, still have Toys R Us here. Um, yeah. I asked them; they're not going anywhere. Uh, from yeah. what they know. Uh, so I don't know if I see anything, I'll, I'll keep you posted. Yeah, yeah. Um, but even right now, like Amazon Canada has barely gotten any series two stuff. Um, and when they do get it, it takes like days to ship. So who knows? I don't, yeah. I don't know what's going on with it. So we've only talked about two items so far and it's been an hour. So let's move on here. Let's move on. Um, we got, we got fan toxicity out here. So you know, this is a community topic that's been going around is, uh, you know, how people are reacting to like we were talking about with Colin, like we we had some criticisms and stuff about how things are done, but not him or anything like that. We that's besides the, you know, the point there. But um, people are, are having differences in thoughts and really taking it to another level with stuff like petitions and, and, and really calling people out. And one of the things I got to say that bugs me is people don't pay attention to their tweets. Um, you know, if you're if you're in a tweet uh, with you know a Twitter thread with other people, pay attention to who's tagged in that, because a lot of times Colin's tagged or Jay Bayon is tagged, and then a lot of people are are like saying really really negative stuff in there, well, along with them tagged in this stuff, and it just bugs me. And honestly, I I do tend to like block you. If, if, if that's the case, if you're going to sit there, not pay attention to your tweets and who's involved in it, and you're saying really, really negative things, you're getting blocked. So that happens a lot. That was a side note, but um, I don't know. <laughs> no, so so here's, my, here's my thing on it. Um, I don't care who you want to direct Jurassic World 3. Um, I think each director has their merits. Um, personally, I enjoyed uh, Trevor's take on the first Jurassic World, I think, a little bit better. That's not to say I didn't like Fallen Kingdom. Uh, I think I liked the style of Jurassic World a little bit better. Um, But we just just be nice. We spent 25 years cultivating this small, super friendly, super positive, super hopeful community, right? And before Fallen Kingdom became like at its like maximum hype, like people were just super excited and, you know, we all try to be, you know, those of us really like tighten it in the community, trying to be like really positive towards each other, like uh, each other's projects. Um, we all help each other with like art things or with podcasts or with videos or, uh, you know, hunting down toys or or whatever. 
we have a really positive community. Do not become toxic. Uh, if you've got something mean to say, just, for, just drop it. No one cares about your mean thing. Um, yeah. Don't yeah. be mean for the sake of being mean. Like the things they were saying about Colin were just like straight up hurtful. Like the guy works his life. His, his, the guy works super hard to get up to the position he's in. And these guys are just like tearing him down. Like, oh, Book of Henry. Wah, wah, wah. Like, okay, great. Um, Spielberg's movies were not all winners either. <laughs> and he's a huge director today. So, yeah. you know, just be nice. Yeah. Pay attention to who you're talking to. If you've, if you want to say something to Colin, directly tweet at Colin and let him know how you feel. Like, trust me, he probably doesn't care if you're being mean because he's worked really hard to get where he is. Um, and he's, and it's been, in my opinion, he's killing it. Yeah, you get a, a thick skin, I think. And, and you know, uh, recently I heard um, or I saw um, uh, Ryan Johnson, you know, gets a ton of crap from uh, Star Wars fans because of The Last Jedi, rightfully so in a way, because, well, not rightfully so, uh, there's a lot of outrage, rightfully so, because of the choices that he made. It's not rightfully so to, to criticize him in that way. Uh, but he actually sounded very positive recently. He's like, I just don't see it anymore. I, the block function is very good on Twitter, and I don't see a lot of this stuff. I mute a lot of things, and I, I don't come into contact with a lot of people. Um, but, you know, there's also the other side of it where in, in the Star Wars community you have um, – Kelly, Kelly Marie Tran and Daisy Ridley and, and people like that who have literally vacated uh, social media um, because of the toxicity in their fandom and people really taking it out and, and calling them out uh, because they didn't like their, their character or something like that. You know, calling them horrible names on Twitter or, or yeah, Instagram or wherever. That, the character that, yes, of course, they wrote, right? And like, yeah. you know, completely made decisions. No, these are written by writers and – you know, if you want to get mad at someone, look up the writer. The writer is responsible for everything. Um, I mean, don't be mean. Yeah, but don't like, be mean. Just have a conversation if you want. Have a conversation don't, about don't. it. But like, yeah, I just, I don't get the hate towards Colin. Um, I don't I don't care if you I don't care which one is better. Um, I I know this is an easy. It's gonna be easy for someone to say, well, yeah, but he liked you know Colin's take better. Uh, but it doesn't mean I don't want JA like involved in the next one. Like, man, if those two came together again and like worked together like it was fun following their story uh mm -hmm. for the last like two years right like it was fun following those two as they're shooting and like playing with puppets on in hawaii and stuff like that stuff was fun to me and honestly like colin i'm sure was pulling the strings more than we all probably think he was um you know being again the front man for the franchise at this point um i'm excited to have him back for the third one if universal came tomorrow and said hey, he's not doing it, I'd be like, well, he wasn't doing it when we thought he was going to do Star Wars either. So, like, there's really no gain or loss at that point, right? Like, things can change on a dime. Um, people yeah, work yeah. really hard on these franchises. Uh, they work really hard to bring a lot of people joy, and I just, it's not cool to be mean. Um, I'm just going to, you know, just touch on just – I listen to a lot of kind of funny content, which is, like, guys from, like, old IGN and stuff, and their whole thing is just – be good to each other and uh you know the jurassic park community seems to do that a lot and uh i just don't if you if you want to be toxic don't don't bring it here um this is an escape mm -hmm. for a lot of people um so just don't bring your toxicity we don't want it yeah yeah i know and that that's uh that happened to me recently where somebody brought their toxicity into a a thread and basically i called them out for being a troll and then they backtracked and you know told me that they weren't and i'm like look you were it's just flat out you were so I don't need that and I don't need it, you know, and I'm not, I'm not one of the creators or anything. So I, I feel bad for everybody that has to deal with that stuff. So don't get to that level. Let's not, let's just like take it easy. Just have fun. Just relax. It's all, it's all not that serious in the long run. Uh, yeah. But luckily uh, Colin doesn't seem to be taking it too, too seriously either um, with the whole like petition to replace him uh, with whoever, whether it's Bayona or somebody else. There's a numerous amount of petitions out there that really don't have that many signatures and are honestly not going to do a single thing. So no, why are you filling it out? Signing, like, signing an online petition is a waste of your time. <laughs> like, Look, I, 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 you know, I really want to sign the one for um, uh, for James Gunn because I, I, you know, talking about that real quickly, like people might – try to find a dig something on Colin Trevorrow just because they hate him. And that seems to be what happened here with James Gunn. His stuff that he said was not good. Like you don't say that stuff 
But in his defense, it was a joke. And, you know, whether it was in good taste, that's a different conversation. But, uh, you know, he got fired over something. So Colin Trevorrow, he's in the same, you know, in the same realm right now. Yeah, he's that kind of guy where he interacts with fans. Same thing with uh, James Gunn. So I don't want anything like that to happen. Uh, but he doesn't seem to be taking it too seriously at this point. Yeah, no, hopefully uh, the James Gunn thing to me is, is ridiculous. At first I was outraged. I was like, how could he possibly say these things? And then someone was like, well, they're from 10 years ago. I'm like, oh, you mean when he was trying to do a stand-up career and trying to be really edgy? Oh, that makes sense. And uh, at the same time, Disney fired him over something that he wasn't even being – he wasn't on Disney's paycheck back then. So whatever. That's a side tangent. It's a weird deal. and and, But at least like that petition has like 300-something thousand. And you're like, well, maybe Disney will take a look. But no, I don't ever think that will happen. You know, I don't think any company cares. I don't think anybody cares about these online petitions. But – uh, this one is just a little ridiculous. I mean, nobody's going to care overall. Um, but Colin doesn't care because he – he. I'm going to quote a little – a few tweets here from him. He says uh, because Screen Rant actually retwe- retweeted it or shared it on their website or whatever, he says, I wouldn't take uh, Screen Rant too seriously. The website is designed to monetize the passion of fandom. Their writers generate negative clickbait because they're paid to do it. I wouldn't blame their freelancers who make the content. They're just doing their job. He also says fake controversies and toxicity in fandoms make their parent corporations money. So, of course, they'll stoke that fire. They are profiting off your passion uh, in reference, basically, to Screen Rant. Like, well, of course, they're going to talk about the negativity. Um, He also says, I love our fans. I rely on their deep understanding of the franchise, and I listen to them when we push the boundaries and make bold choices. They may not agree with every choice, but they do support us uh, because they want us kids around. Wait, I just messed that up. They, They support us because they want kids around the world to have dinosaur movies, too. Also, he said, when Jurassic fans hold our feet to the fire, it's not out of hatred. It's because they don't want us to forget the wonder and respect for the natural world that the first movie had and the right to do it. So, you know, basically he's in, he's referencing, you know, a lot of the, the hardcore fans that are basically like, look, uh, you know, what about this or what about that? The people who are actually having the conversations. So, you know, he does recognize that and he does recognize the people who are being toxic and how it, you know, it's basically just, uh, you know, profit for sites like Screen Rant or other sites that are, you know, stoking the fire, as he says. Yeah, you know, just in that statement alone, right? When he made that, I was like, he he wrote it, and I'm like, I'm on board with this guy. Um, he's right. The only thing Jurassic fans really truly uh, get outraged about is when these movies turn into uh, straight up movies with no heart and i feel like that's kind of where jurassic park 3 like let us let everyone down was there really was no wonder it was just constant running from the second they uh well, they didn't step off the plane they were attacked on a plane like it, <laughs> it was just constant running right um and that's i think where jurassic park 3 kind of failed for a lot of people um was that lack of wonder except for the one scene fine guys fans i'll give you the one scene where they pull up in front of uh a field while they're on the boat, but there's really not much wonder in that movie. And so, oh, so he ugly. gets it. <laughs> it's what? It's so ugly. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah. ZBrush was uh, so ZBrush was a new technology, <laughs> so we had to throw it everywhere. Um, oh. You know, uh, but uh, just let let these let them do what they're doing. He he made the decision to hire Bayona, and he made a good decision. Um, I don't think anybody would argue against that. So, um, you know, who knows? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe tomorrow he says, guys, I found a new director uh, who's going to do a great job with Jurassic yeah. World 3. Someone you've never even heard of, but I, I have complete faith in in this person. Yeah. You know, who knows? We who don't knows? Gonna happen. You know, it's, it's weird because so many people in the Star Wars community talk about, you know, we got to we, we got to treat people like Kelly Marie Tran, who played Rose in, in The Last Jedi. We got to treat her with respect because she she left. And, and look what happens when you you know, you treat people badly. But at the same time, that Star Wars community is super hard on Colin Trevorrow and, and their, their hate for him. And I don't get it. I really don't get it. I, I don't know what went wrong. You know, what went so wrong, whether it was Jurassic World for people or the Book of Henry. I don't know. But that Star Wars community is is a bit weird because they they hate on Colin Trevorrow and they they love the fact that J.J. Abrams was brought back and Colin was fired and all that stuff and and glad that he is so far away from the franchise. I see the quotes all the time 
And it, it makes me sick because I'm like, I'm glad that he is here and doing this and finishing out this trilogy. I'm glad. Yeah, when he was, when everyone was, uh, my buddy was super excited, right? That, that he was off the Star Wars project. And I was like, good, we'll take him. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I, that was my first instinct was like, oh man, I, I would have loved to have seen him do that, but come back. You know, we need yeah. you. We need you back he's, here. He's killing it with Jurassic. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll take him forever. Stick with us, Colin. We love yeah. you. Yeah. So why don't we move on here uh, to uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The DVD uh, release has been announced. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of things to discuss here because there's a lot of different versions and uh, special features. Uh, well, maybe not a ton of special features, but there's there's some. Um, so basically, it looks like we have um, what do we got? We got some kind of five movie collection. We have uh, the Target collection, uh, the Steelbook from Best Buy, and a Walmart uh, edition with like. Funko Pop keychains, which are tiny. Um, and then, oh, there's another, like, 4K Ultra Edition. And, uh, yeah, so do you know which one are you getting currently? Do you Did you already pre-order yours? So, all right, here's the thing. I'm getting real worn down with Jurassic DVDs and Blu-rays. And, and, and here's the thing. <laughs> Star Wars, Star Wars, guys, doesn't nearly have this many ridiculous combinations of things you can no. buy, right? So why – okay, and this is, this is what bugs me. I was always of the mentality, I'm going to get Jurassic movies in – this is, this is like an ultimate dumb collector's mentality. I'm going to get <laughs> Jurassic movies in every format, and I'm going to get them in every case, and I'm going to get them uh, – yeah, every, every format in every case, right? And it yeah. was like – because that was obtainable. There was basically DVD and Blu-ray – and then, and, and you know, in VHS, and, and, and so like as as media's would like advance, the old ones would fade out, and you literally like they wouldn't make a Jurassic World VHS, right? So I started doing this, and, and like for those who don't know, I have an I have an insane amount of copies of just Jurassic Park. I've got like fifteen or sixteen copies of this one movie on different mediums and and different covers and cases and all that stuff. It was fun. It's not fun anymore. Stop it. <laughs> um, <laughs> like. Oh, yeah. Like, okay, so here's the thing. I'm not getting the Best Buy version because I don't like steel books and I don't particularly even like that steel book. Um, I am 100% getting the 3D version because I worked on it. So I am buying that, uh, Go 3D. And I'm probably getting the 4K version um, to get the original artwork on a 4K release. Now, whether or not I get that 4K version right away or later, um, the 3D version is what I'm getting right away because 3D Blu-rays in the States are kind of starting to peter off. I've actually been having to get a lot of my work from uh, Zavi over in the UK. Um, but as, as long as Universal supports 3D Blu-ray in the States and in Canada, uh, North America, I guess, um, I'll be supporting them. Uh, so that's the version I'm getting right away, and I'm getting the standard uh, Jurassic World case. I want it to be as standard as possible. I'm already mad that it's not just a logo, uh, but that's beside the point. Um, so I'm getting as standard as you can possibly get in 3D. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, each one of these tends to try to, like, sell you. Like, Walmart's yeah. trying to sell you with these little Funko Pop keychains. And it stinks because uh, I'm sure I'm going to miss out on Target, like, exclusive bonus scenes. Yeah, So well, not, yeah, not, not maybe, I it. guess. Um, yeah, I mean, the Steelbooks, people really like Steelbooks. Uh, I don't really care that oh, much. Oh, yeah, I, I'm in the minority on that. I know that. Yeah. I like um, – now, Steelbooks are different because – I don't care for that much, but um, this what are those? The round steel tins. Those are different from steel books, right? Um, I enjoyed those. Uh, those were like Best Buy exclusives. Yeah, so, but so, so is, is this even, one, but it's yeah, but not Best round. Not, well, they're not following up with their own collection, which is annoying. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like that was that was great. I loved that little collection. Um, now, I think I only have Jurassic World on, on that, so I didn't even follow up. But... Um, I did get the uh, the 4K Jurassic Park, um, which I don't even have a 4K player. I don't have a 4K TV. So uh, the you only way eventually. I'm watching you will, you'll have something eventually. Eventually. Like, I mean, it ca- yeah. it came with Blu-ray, and it also came with a DVD. Or, I'm sorry, uh, the, the well, maybe that too, but uh, the um, digital copy. That's really well, that, that's all I care about right now um, for a lot of things, but yeah. That's what's frustrating for me is that Sony for a while was doing um, the, uh, like the, 
they weren't calling them like the multi pack or the maximum pack, but it was it was basically one case that came with 4K, uh, it came with 3D, and it came with Blu-ray. Because let's face it, if you're getting a 4K disc, you you don't care about DVD. You obviously have have moved on, right? Yeah. So, but it came with the three. It came with the main format of today's standard, and it came with the two special standards, and that was awesome. Now they've split 3D and 4K, which makes sense because 3D is HD and 4K is 4K. But now it's like if I want the, in my opinion, the three standard ways to watch that movie, I gotta buy three, or two copies. Like no, no, like it's that's it kind of stinks for me. But what did you do for Jurassic World? Well, this was back in my days where I wanted every movie in every okay. format. So I have uh, I have Jurassic World in Best Buy round tin. I have Jurassic World in uh dvd jurassic world in blu-ray jurassic world in the no i even bought an extra blu-ray so i could fill my um my (laughs) my collector's box that came with like the empty slot so like i bought an extra copy like i'm just i'm exhausted like you're the worst (laughs) i am like so here's the thing i have a problem with like wanting to complete collections like yeah like people like i'm i'm the first to admit it but it's gotten to the point where it's just exhausting at this point like Come on, there's gonna be a, a five disc box set. No, no thanks. Because yeah. I know there's a six one coming out. In a that's years, real like. frustrating. Like, especially to release the four disc, and then uh, like a month later, basically like a few months, but like another box set with just with the Fallen Kingdom. Now it that's ridiculous. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm just getting tired. Like, I so I bought the 4K like collectors set, so I'll have the first four movies in 4K, and then, um. In a, in a collection and then i'll have the i don't know it just stinks because i know they're going to release them individually as well which it, i'm just over it i'm waiting i, I don't know i'm just over it yeah I'm frustrated by it. yeah like for, for jurassic world i was kind of into those exclusives you know there was the one i bought off of amazon and i think it went for like 70 something bucks but i found it was like a deal one day and it was like 45 or something and it was that like the one that came with the statue of the indominus and the t-rex um, yeah. So that that was like a must have. I'm like, I got to have that. That's awesome uh, because those look better than the Hasbro toys at the time. Um, so I got that one. And then I'm like, oh, no, Barnes and Noble. What are you doing? You're you're giving out awesome posters for awesome posters for a DVD. I think yeah. I, I I don't even think it was Blu-ray. I think it was just I think I bought DVDs and we, I, we, I, I went we, there. I'm glad I got those because that one was in Fallen Kingdom. We we have reached maximum saturation as far as like uh, what we can what as far as I can handle as far as like collectibles and stuff because like yeah you know you mentioned like buying a copy later I actually bought a copy of Jurassic World on Steelbook here's the reason why so stupid I love it but because it's the only way you could have gotten the movie with just the Jurassic World logo like okay yeah, yeah. that was like the only way you could get it was from uh, UK in, uh, in Steelbook but like. People, you know, especially around the height of the the hype for um, Fallen Kingdom, everyone's like telling me, oh, there's this, there's this, there's this, there's this. I'm like, I know. There's $200 worth of merch coming out like tomorrow. Like, I can't do it. Like, it's <laughs> – it, yeah. it, we've hit the Star Wars thing that we all asked for. We're there. And, yeah. I, you know, I asked for it too. And that's just because I wanted options. I have options now. I can't collect everything. It's not realistic. And uh, it's a lot of fun. But, you know, I – the. Uh, when a movie comes out, there shouldn't be three hundred dollars worth of different variations. Just come yeah. up with a couple, you know. Yeah. So if you want those variations, like uh, I said, all those different ones, Target has like a twenty-eight page gallery book, which is fantastic. That's great. I I tend to get those, you know, the the ones with the cool stuff like in the package. Um, but you know what? I never even look at them once, once I buy them, like I look at it real quick and I, I breeze through it and then like, it just sits in the package forever. Um, so that's a well, problem. So, is this gallery book, is it going to have art? Cause that's a great transition into another topic. Yeah. If, uh... Oh yeah. Well it does, but we'll, we'll save that. But yeah, it, it okay. definitely has art in there. Um, that, I guess that's exactly what it is an art gallery, uh, 28 pages, but that's cool. That's a, that's a cool thing. I'll probably end up getting, I'll just run target and go get it. Um, right. because they never run out of copies. No, they that. never run out. They'll have everything. Um, yeah. yeah, but the, this, I don't know where you buy this one. I guess you just buy it anywhere, but like this five uh, disc set, they're killing me with that Mark Englert poster art on there. No, like, are you serious? Yes. It's on the packaging. And I'm like, that. <sighs> that's one of those things where you're like, I 
hate you guys right now because I want it. I it's want so that. <laughs> no. Oh, dude. You got to be kidding me. Like, that's amazing. And the steel book, I don't know. It doesn't seem to have anything aside from just being a steel book. Maybe uh, yeah, oh, it comes kinda... with. Oh, that's it. I guess it comes with a collectible package or whatever. But And the, I, I literally don't care about those Funko Pop keychains. That's. Nothing. Yeah, I don't care about those. Um, the the idea that blue is just on the cover of the thing, like, oh, okay, whatever. It's, it's like, a nice looking blue, like that's fine. Yeah, it looks, it's a nice render that's yeah. been desaturated. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Um, I just, I don't know, like, I I, I like the standard logo, guys. Just give me the standard logo. That's yeah, all we're I want. past that, and we're past you that. Know, which it's, they, I, I wrote when to, they started with that uh, terrible. Uh, you know, motorcycle package with, you know, Owen and uh, some of the Raptors, you knew it was never uh, going back to the uh, just the logo. Yeah, you knew it was never going back to just the logo, except for the soundtrack we got, which had just the logo, except for now. Yeah, We've broken away from that. And, and even, even the movie itself, though, it has a, a title sequence unlike any of the other movies. And I love that title sequence. It's fantastic. But it just doesn't match any of the other movies <laughs> whatsoever. But I that's just hate, the theme we got here. Sequence. Huh? That title sequence. You hate it? <laughs> I don't. Yeah. That's. I think that's fair. That's very fair. My wife said the same thing. She's like, I hated that. Dude, I didn't so, understand what that music was. It didn't sound like anything. It, it dude, was weird. So, but like, I I love it. It's very. It reminds me of like I'm thinking like Vader's castle. Like it's just no, like so lava here's what flowing. Here's here's my argument for why I don't like it. So when I was sitting in the theater, uh, all excited for Jurassic Park three, and the title comes up and it says Jurassic Park, and then claws come oh. through the screen to make it three, I sat back in that movie theater and I went, oh, it's gonna be that kind of movie. Yep. And so yep. when, when the lava is like filling the logo and like it like is pouring in and like zooms out with the music, I just sat back and I was like. It's gonna be that kind of movie. <laughs> it's like, like it's like a mixture of like Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Yeah. It's like all over the place. But like I enjoy it. Was it. A lot, it was a lot better than Jurassic Park three. But yeah, that's oh, like, yeah. that was like my attitude. Like right off the bat, I was like, oh, this is here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I like it, but it, I wish it was a little bit more uniform. But you know, what are you gonna do? It's fine. Well, there, it's, the title sequences aren't that uniform anyway, so. Whatever. Yeah, like Jurassic World didn't at look least, anything like the original three, so it's fine. At least it has like the you know however many miles off the coast or whatever. That's that's uh, you know good. I like that. Yeah, totally. totally, totally. Um, but um, so apparently the Target version, you know, aside from that twenty-eight page gallery, comes with thirty extra minutes of content, uh, behind-the-scenes stuff probably. Um, but you know, I, I wasn't very thrilled with what Target had on their disc, which was basically what every other thing had on their um th their discs so it wasn't a lot of great stuff on that one so i'm gonna run through uh the special features that are on all the formats um so it says on set with chris and bryce go behind the scenes with chris and bryce uh the birth of the indoraptor an inside look at the genetically designed monstrosity known as the indoraptor death by dino go behind the scenes as the raptor faces off with a key character um, Monster in a Mansion. Director J. A. Bayona discusses how Jurassic Park and Dracula influenced his approach to direct the Monster uh, in a Mansion scene. The Rooftop Showdown. A look at the terrifying showdown on the rooftop of Lockwood Mansion. Malcolm's Return. Behind the scenes with the one and only Jeff Goldblum. That's That should be good. I'm excited for that. <laughs> um, v VFX Evolved. The team at ILM discussed their cutting-edge approach to creating dinosaurs. Fallen Kingdom, the conversation. Filmmakers and the cast sit down for candid and casual conversation about J uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. A song for the kingdom. Justice Smith sings for the cast and crew of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. That doesn't sound like it's going to be much of anything. Uh, and this is a little bothersome. Chris Pratt's Jurassic Journals, uh, which you've all already seen. They're, they're on social media. They released them, you know, up through the release of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I don't know why that's on a, a DVD, you know, when it's online. It shouldn't mm -hmm. be there. It's just taking up space. Um, the next it's a one. comprehensive, like comprehensiveness, I guess. Like I guess, like, I don't know. It doesn't, it, it, either way, like. Regardless, In include it's just, include the stuff from the contests that you did, where you ask yeah, fans to too. to like, submit their at? their heart out, you know, about what they love about the franchise. Include that, like that's some good stuff. Um, 
the last one here in this column at least says Jurassic Then and Now presented by Barbasol. Uh, that was a waste of time on the on the Jurassic World disc, I'll be honest. The Barbasol, uh, whatever they presented last time. It was just an advertisement, essentially. I honestly don't even know what you're like I, I've seen all the bonus content. I really don't even remember what you're talking well, about. Well that's the so problem. They, that's the problem. The bonus content and these days for whatever really you're buying into, it, it just it's not memorable. Um, I don't know if that's you know a, a factor of nostalgia or a time or what, but mm-hmm. like the stuff in the past was super comprehensive. Like the the documentaries that they had on there really went in depth, really showed them making the movies, not just clips. And a lot of the stuff in Jurassic World was just clips, and that you you've seen all the clips, you, and you're essentially seeing a clip of them making the scene, which is essentially just the scene. It's not like a behind the scenes, which it should be. Part of me feels like that has to do with like when they were doing major documentaries like on Lord of the Rings and Pirates and and I feel like how and this is just me observing um, just industry news and, and just kind of how the industry has reacted uh, to like even like TVs and all this stuff. It feels like maybe they felt like they kind of gave away the keys to the kingdom and like told people how to make movies and so all of a sudden you got this influx of like independence and like high-end VFX being in some like, you know, independent films. And, Mm -hmm. but that was going to happen with technology anyway, right? People were eventually going to figure it out. So yeah, I don't think you can blame that, especially when, when the last Jedi releases their, um, you know, that was just recently, they had an amazing documentary on the daily life, like of uh, Ryan Johnson and the team that made that movie. That is exactly what we're missing from this franchise now because that's what we got back then. We, I, I had like – there were separate VHS tapes that was like an entire documentary on making these movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. that was incredible. And that was what Star Wars just got with The Last Jedi. That's not on here. That's not present in this – maybe in another version, but I hope not. I don't think they'll do that because that was no. on the initial version of The Last Jedi – um Jurassic less, isn't too his historically they don't release too much more um like yeah. later down the line. So no, there's yeah, reasons, yeah. but yeah. Well a lot of that had to do with Steven Spielberg, I think, because he just he's not a big, you know, showing off kind of guy. But you know, some of that early stuff did was very good. I don't know. But this is it, it's interesting. I'm sure it'll just be a clip show. So I'm not looking uh, for are not expecting a lot out of these, but um, hopefully Bayona has a, a good influence here. Even though he he wants no deleted scenes, so I don't see any deleted scenes on here. So that's uh, that's disappointing for sure. I don't I don't get. I, I'm I'm totally. It doesn't matter. I'm I'm totally cool with like deleted scenes. Like, but the thing is, if it's not in the movie again, to me, it's not fully canon. So. Well, but then, um, but then, what is what even is the the, uh, the Lost World when it's on TNT or whatever channel it's on? Because like they still show the deleted scenes in that movie, which I don't yeah, understand. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, like they they still have the boardroom scene, and I think still uh, the uh, the uh, you know uh, Roland and AJ scene is still there. Like, which I love those scenes, even though. Even though the boardroom scene doesn't really line up with everything we have today, um, but um, that's not what I'm asking for. I just want to see, you know, some stuff that didn't make the cut because we right. know there's a few things here and there that uh, didn't make the cut, um, and, and oh, it's not for canon sake or anything like that. I just like, you know, it's just fun to see that stuff because. Are you saying he doesn't even want like a reel of deleted scenes? Yeah, like, I don't. I, don't there, there, I didn't. Everything I just said. Oh, there is, there's no. no that's different. Reel. There's no I think, real. I'm thinking like you're talking like a director's cut or something. Oh no I no no that. no! I don't care about that. Like director's cut, whatever. Oh, that's no. I know people really some... pine for those, but there's no deleted scenes. Oh no no no! You gotta give me you gotta give me deleted scenes. You gotta give me bloopers. When when someone accidentally swears, it's really funny to me. I don't know why. Oh yeah <laughs> like, <you laughs> yeah. Know, or they or they mess up. Like that's funny. So I I yeah I, I kind of hope we get that stuff. So. There was a quote from Colin's Twitter where he had said, uh, you know, because somebody was talking about uh, deleted scenes and a, or a director's cut. And, it, and he said, the movie is the director's cut. As producers, we supported J.A.'s vision. My job was to help him realize it enable and enable him to succeed. So that's basically saying, like, it is what it is. 
That's what you right. get. Um, you know, whatever Target has with their 30 minutes extra is not going to be uh, deleted scenes, I don't think. But, um, it's, you know, we don't know so far, I guess. But, um, you know, that's disappointing. But uh, apparently there are some more special features on HD formats, I guess. Uh, I don't know. So this I'm says, not sure. It, this says The Kingdom Evolves. I'll read these ones. The Kingdom Evolves. Filmmakers discuss how the second chapter in Jurassic World Trilogy pushes the franchise in a new direction. Sounds fun. Uh, yeah. Return to Hawaii. The cast and crew discuss shooting the film in Hawaii. Um, island action. A behind-the-scenes look at the bunker scene and runaway gyrosphere sequence. Aboard the Arcadia. Cast and crew discuss working with the animatronic dinosaurs. Start the bidding. A behind-the-scenes look at the auction scene. So that stuff, that sounds pretty good too. And some of the other stuff sounds good too. I just hope that they're not five minutes because a lot of the stuff on Jurassic World was like five to ten minutes. Mm, I'm, um, I'm assuming that's what we're going to get. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what we're going to get. Yeah, so that's what we're looking at as far as the DVD is concerned. Um, I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what it is. I'm not you know, holding them to any standard at this point because of you know some of the stuff that we got in Jurassic World. It was fine. It just wasn't what I'd hope to get yeah yeah I, I get what you're saying i honestly at this point i'm really excited for the conglomerate six disc set that we're gonna get in five years so yeah, yeah. or three years i guess um I, I'm, I'm ready for that one just so that i can have my definitive jurassic park collection um for the time being until they decide to start doing spinoffs uh which definitely this this last movie felt like they could easily do some smaller spinoffs which i think would be interesting um yeah yeah i don't know well, let me skip here because um, you know you had mentioned uh, the uh, a good transition at least because of the uh, twenty eight page art book um, that's with the Target edition. Um, we've been talking about this a lot. Um, I know we've had conversations. I've had conversations outside with other people, and I know people on Twitter have been ranting about it a lot recently. Is is where are our art of Jurassic Park books? Because again, we. I cannot have this podcast without referencing Star Wars because like you said earlier we're we're at that level we're getting to that level where we're we're trying to be on par with what Star Wars is producing and we are falling behind in that sense because we're not getting things like like the art of Star Wars is for every single movie um an in-depth look at the making of the movies with concept art and and deleted stuff and and different characters and all kinds of crazy stuff um we don't have that for any of these things any of these movies right like okay so we do we do for the first two we have um jody duncan uh did two their paperback you can get them now fairly cheap oh, okay. on on eBay, um, they're called the making of, and then either Jurassic Park or oh yeah World, yeah Jurassic yeah. Park. Well, I have those yeah. Okay, so but that's the closest we've gotten. Mm -hmm. um, those are actually great looks, and this is obviously pre what art books are today. Yeah, um, there's definitely some art in there, but it's small. They're, they're small. So small. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, um, they're small. Yeah, they're not, they so, don't really count to me because the size of the Star Wars ones are are almost textbook. You know, and forget and forget Star Wars at this point. Every movie has an art book. doesn't matter what you are. Godzilla has an art book. The only real, in my opinion, the only crazy thing in Godzilla was Godzilla and the moth monsters, right? Like everything else was so real looking that like, here's, like, here's like Chinatown or something. Right, like, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to say like, you know, I'm not trying to say like, where's the art in that movie? Cause it's a film and obviously like a lot of love and care went into that movie, but there's nothing, there's nothing out of the ordinary. And Jurassic, for some reason, has never had a large format art book. It's it's like embarrassing, I guess. I don't like. It's just weird that they would do not want to share this art. Like, it makes no sense to me. Yeah, I mean, there is there is no explanation, man. Like, it, I've heard people say that maybe we'll get one, uh, or not maybe, but we'll probably end up getting one after the third movie. Cool, fine. But why are you not profiting? I don't understand Universal's standpoint. Why are you not profiting off of every single movie? Release them after every single movie. A uh, 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 highly, you know, thick book with like awesome art and everything inside there. Because we'll spend it. We'll pay for it. Yeah, we'll pay for the one at the end of the the trilogy. But you should be selling it to us every time, and we'd all buy it. It doesn't make any sense. I guess like you talked only... about with the DVDs. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me from the standpoint that like, OK, so the I would say the closest thing we have right now um, is going to be uh, a Facebook group um, called Behind the Gates. And uh, this this person on Facebook um, posts all kinds of really cool concept art from every film uh, that we've had so far. Um, behind the scenes images, production stills, uh, concept art, um, you know, deleted scene images, uh, images of maquettes, images of robots, images of CG. Like, there's so many cool things that this that that's out there online. Like, why is this stuff not being cultivated by Universal? Like, why is it essentially, I mean, for a lack of better term, being pirated on the internet? <laughs> when, when Universal yeah. could sell it for thirty bucks a pop, I don't, I don't understand it. It's a shame when sites like Jurassic Outpost or our our website are the ones sharing this stuff. You know, like it shouldn't be. We shouldn't have that. Uh, have to do that. You know, because you know we'll track down. We'll we'll find an artist that worked on this stuff, or you know we'll share it on Facebook, or or you know on this you know behind the gates. Like you know, there's so many great artists that over the past three years have released their work on Jurassic World, and pre it looking like Jurassic world where it was still like a Jurassic park sequel. Um, and, and all the iterations of everything like you, I've, I've just gone to so many individual artists website where they're like, Hey, I worked on this thing. If you want to look at it, like, like almost like treating it like nobody ever wants to see this. Um, but then we like rack up the views on their site with, you know, all the crazy Jurassic fandom, but this stuff needs to be viewed like, in stores, it needs to be bought on Amazon or you know at Barnes and Noble. I don't know why this stuff doesn't exist. So I'm looking at my bookshelf right now, and I yeah. I, I have a I have a I'm gonna say medium sized collection of art books. All right, let's let's talk about the movies that are nowhere near the level of <laughs> Jurassic Park, but still have art books on my shelf. Um, Spider Man Three, uh, <laughs> Tron. Uh, let's see, John Carter of Mars. <gasps> Um, oh, hmm, Thor Ragnarok, Watchmen, uh, Justice League, uh, Batman v Superman. Okay. Uh, like, like the Jurassic outshines all of these movies and we don't have an art book. It just makes, it makes no sense. Yeah. I mean, uh, as we're scrolling here through behind the gates, there is some incredible stuff. And I know a lot of the stuff is pretty recent, even like, uh, the fallen kingdom stuff about like, um, the different uh, iterations of the Indoraptor being there being a white version um, and one that was like tortured by uh, the people at uh, Lockwood Mansion and stuff like that. Like that stuff that could have been represented awesomely in the movies, but we, we see it here in artwork form and it's cool. I love seeing alternative um, routes that they could have taken and stuff like you know everybody talks about that human hybrid concept for Jurassic Park 4 um or you know even the sales script and, and everything that's out there those are cool things that we should be getting like glimpses of um officially and I don't yeah. know why it's not happening like like this there's an image here on on uh behind the gates of of Nublar in flames like completely uh, covered right. in lava and that is that's a that's a sight to see. Like, and that's not anything that was really portrayed in the movie. I mean, like I've talked about this. I mentioned it to you. I mentioned it all the time that it looks like a small portion got hit with lava <laughs> in the movie. Right. It really yeah. didn't seem to be like a world-ending event um, for Nublar as it was made to believe. And you know, I'm just like, just go. F- There's obviously still dinosaurs alive. Like that's my sentiment. Even though they're telling us we're never going back. Um, but this image here shows like everything is dead. Like that is, that's a conclusion right there. So that's, that's fantastic. A lot of people are not seeing this image. Um, if they're not, you know, liking this page on Facebook. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Oh, there's a, there's a, uh, one of his later Jurassic park, one of his most recent Jurassic park concept art has like an image of the T-Rex that looks like before McCreary might've gotten, actually it looks very like McCreary, but it looks like McCreary's version of like a Ray Harryhausen style t-rex mm-hmm. um there's let's see um velociraptors outside of windows um in the dark and you're right like there's a place there's a place for things like human hybrid dinosaurs and that's in an art book with a paragraph that says ah, look what we almost did aren't you glad we did? <laughs> like you know like yeah share it with the world and charge it charge for it man yeah like people will pay it i've heard exactly. that before i've heard yeah. it 
I feel like that's been in somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah, that's our sentiment there. I know a lot of you share that same thought, um, and you would pay for it. So, Universal, listen, are you listening right now? We demand it. Give it to us right now. Release all five films right now, and then release all six films in one book. We'll buy it. We'll still buy it. Universal, it's if you said, content. hey, um, <laughs> we'll do it, but you have to buy a five-book pack as one thing, hey, guess who's going to be there? I'm there yeah. for you, Universal. Yeah. I'll buy five books. Yeah, well, so I, I just I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, let's uh, let's stick with Facebook here um, and talk about stuff like you know Jurassic Compound on Facebook, which is our, our buddy Ted Brothers and uh, people like him doing awesome custom paint jobs and stuff like that. Let's talk about Ted Brothers. Um, <laughs> number one, Ted's awesome. He made for me a set of uh, Kenner T Rex arms to uh, fit my Red Rex. So huge shout out. Same, for him for that. same. Those things are amazing, dude. I, I, you know, I had that video. I filmed that video because I'm like, this is a childhood dream come to life. Like because I lost those things somewhat early on, and they've been missing forever. And he made them. It's just a dream come true. Like, yeah, if you're not. If you don't have Facebook, you get Facebook to follow Ted <laughs> Brothers uh, at Jurassic Park Compound. Uh, you're missing out on some great, I'm going to say daily artwork. Well, yeah, definitely, especially on Instagram too. Like he is. Oh, is he on Instagram? Over, too? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Just follow Ted oh, yeah. Brothers. He's on there like killing oh, that's it right. with, that's with all the, the content, you know, like every day. It's like, I'm like, Ted, where are you? Where do you? Ted, where do you find the time to set up these amazing like dioramas and go outside and take pictures and edit this stuff and and Photoshop and do all that stuff. Like you're creating some awesome content, man. It's yeah. you're killing it every day, and it's so, it's crazy. For those who are not familiar uh, with his work, um, he does uh, mainly repaints of action figures, but he also does um, diorama shots in the vein of like what Kenner used to put on the back of their boxes um, for like the bigger dinosaurs. Uh, so, for instance, today, as of today. He released uh, a repaint of the uh, electronic baryonyx from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, uh, repainted in the vein of the old Kenner Series 2, but a lot more detail. It looks amazing. Um, he's got uh, a Stegosaurus, a Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Stegosaurus toy from uh, Mattel that he repainted to look exactly like uh, the Stegosaurus from The Lost World. This yeah, guy is on another level of artistry. Like my, it's my absolutely favorite, fantastic. My favorite right now is his uh, Cyclops Raptor in the pack. Like he he carefully undid that uh, crouching Velociraptor from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom toy line. That yeah, green one. Right now it's so good. Carefully undid the packaging so that there's no you know cracks or anything, and then repainted that to look exactly like like I'm looking at my uh, Cyclops right now. It's identical. Like it, it looks no different, basically, than the repaint that he did. And I'm just like, that is incredible. He also did the same thing for the Dilophosaurus as well, yep. and the repackages them, puts them back in. They look like brand new. And uh, I, I saw that. I, I actually, I, you know, scrolling through Instagram, I'm like, I saw the Dilophosaurus. I'm like, oh, he just put the old Dilophosaurus in the in the new packaging. And then I, uh, when I went back and looked, I'm like, oh wait, he he repainted the new. Dilophosaurus and put it in the packaging. Yeah, and he's not just creating like dioramas, like with you know, like like out. Like he's not just going outside and shooting dioramas. There's there's some of that for sure. But yeah. Like for instance, I'm looking at one from July 17th, right, of a mercenary standing outside in a raincoat, uh, in the in the tall grass with uh, like a the shed, like a power shed, right, from like the beginning of of fallen kingdom and the t-rex is like peeking out from behind and he's got like some cg rain in there that he added in like some photoshop rain it just looks so good you guys this Dude, guy is so, so good it's so good yeah this guy's work is so good mattel called him out at comic-con uh you know during their panel this guy's on another level if you're not following him on instagram or facebook you're you're missing out on some great entertainment and artwork. yeah it's, it's fantastic speaking of that one you just mentioned like the generator and the guy that's another one. When I'm going through Instagram, I'm like scrolling pretty quick and I'm liking, double tapping and all that. And I scrolled through this one and I, I hit the like and, and everything and I looked at it. I'm like, oh, he just photoshopped in like the T-Rex toy into the movie. <laughs> That's what I thought. And then and then when I like I, you know, because because that shot has been online like so people have been like the actual movie, like 
yeah. like sharing it around and stuff of the lightning strike and you see the T-Rex in the background through the trees. And I scrolled through, I'm like, oh, he just put the T-Rex in like the toy in that shot from the movie. And then like oh. I double looked at it, I'm like, oh no, he, he recreated that scene. No, <laughs> okay. So you you were talking about you were talking about how you're not sold on the Sukumimus. If you if you go to July 10th, he's got a photo of all these like mercenaries and ACU people like yes yeah and there's this Sukumimus b- bursting out of the jungle and they're they're all in the mud. That he's got like some electricity coming out at these guys. There's like there's dust particles uh, coming up with a dino- like if if you're not sold on a Sukumimus action figure from Mattel, go look at this uh, image like. I'm on it. Like this thing is so cool. This guy needs to be working for Mattel. Honestly, I, I really don't get uh, Mattel freelance this guy out. Um, he, he's doing amazing work with with your action figures. Like he will, he could sell you. He could sell you toys. For yeah. Sure. There's there's a guy. Um. Uh. Do you follow uh, follow father f- father's figures on Twitter at all? Uh. Nope. But I will go check it out. Yeah. Right so now. he he basically does you know a lot what uh, Ted Brothers does um, with mostly any kind of action figures but uh, mostly star wars i think so he he does like that similar type thing and i followed him for years and now ted is killing it and i'm just like my god these these people are unstoppable i don't understand like how well like how how they come out as well as they do i just don't get it like i don't have that uh qualification i guess when it comes to instagramming well, here's the thing is like I totally could sit down and, and do something like this if I if I had the time. But like honestly, for me, like Ted fulfills this this desire that I have to go do that. And he does it like he does it faster than I could do it. And yeah, he does it so well that I don't feel like I'm going to go out there and like necessarily like it's not a competition, but like I'm not going to beat him. Right. Like it's that's a silly mentality. But it's so good. I just love watching it. Like I'm happy he's doing it. Yeah, yeah, and and the fact that he got that shout out at, at Comic Con from Mattel is incredible. Uh, like I, I heard that, and I almost felt like proud to know him. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. wow, that's awesome. And, like he no, gets no. a shout out, you know? Brad, I literally, I, I, he, he, he tweeted about the video. I watched the video, and I turned to the guy next to me. And I was like, dude, watch this video. I know this guy. Like, and I, <laughs> I know him. I know him cr- through the internet. Like, I don't even like, know. I was. You're like, on I was the like, same like, podcast as him. Yeah, I was like gushing. I was like, dude, I, I've talked with this guy. I bought this guy's <laughs> products once. Like, this is so yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the ultimate compliment from uh, really anybody you could get. So congratulations, Ted, man. Your work is awesome. Yeah, man. That uh, That's that's so cool. I, I just love everybody out there that's sharing their custom paint jobs. And Travis Stevens does an amazing job as well. Like, I love, love, love his stuff. He does all kinds of toys, too, and, and you know, customizes them and stuff. So everybody is so talented in this community. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, so what else do we have to talk about well, today, man? We, I feel we, like we're, we're running long. Yeah, we're running long. If you don't mind, let's just do it. We'll, we'll keep going. Uh, we okay. only have two more things. We have the um, Wave 2 uh, stuff and uh, exclusivity in a way. We can kind of breeze through this, I think. But like stuff like the, the stuff that's hard to get and when you're sharing it out there and letting people know, and, and also this kind of falls in line with what Mondo does in a way with their artwork and, and stuff like that. A lot of the other stuff doesn't sell out, but I guess what I'm trying to say is when, when you announce something and then it's just impossible to get it when it's released. You know, it, it's impossible to get those Wave 2 items that you want. It's impossible to get those Mondo items that you want. What do you think about all this stuff? That how, how exclusive items are becoming? So what I'm going to say is really hypocritical. Um, I get really mad when people do like blasts that say, hey, something's in stock. And then I go to click the link and it's not in stock. The problem <laughs> is, is I'm happy that you let me know, but I'm really mad that there's nothing in stock. So like, <laughs> my opinion is this. I feel like, so So this this all stems from my anger the other day when I missed the Sukumimus blast for like the third time, right? Like I, 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 I clicked on like it was like the third time someone was like oh it's in stock and I went to the link and it was gone. Um, so I'm in a group on Facebook called uh, the official JP Toys Jurassic Park page. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of cool collectors in there. There's a lot of new collectors in there who have like even small like small collections who are like uh, willing to like take your advice as far as like what to hunt down, what's rare. Like it's it's a lot of fun if you're into the toys. Um, but they do these like 
as a as a as what I believe they're doing is like a favor to their followers or just as being friendly or whatever, they're putting out there like, hey, this is up for uh it's in stock on Amazon or Walmart or Target, whatever. But the problem is is like when you do that, I feel like you open up the you kind of open up the floodgates for uh, scalpers and stuff, even though that most people in here are Jurassic Park fans, so they kind of deserve to know that information. I'm not, I'm not going to say that everyone is in it for themselves or for like a goodwill thing. I feel like a lot of times people jump on that stuff so they can turn around and sell it for double, and that annoys me. And that's the same thing with Mondo. Like you're saying Mondo posters, there's really not a rare Mondo poster. You can get almost any Mondo poster you want. The question is, how much are you willing to pay for <laughs> yeah. it? Because Mondo only makes so many, they sell out to nothing but scalpers and snipers online, and then f- the real fans miss out at the at the regular like thirty to sixty dollar range for their prints. So that's really frustrating to me with Mondo, and I get it. Like a real Mondo fan is going to say like, "Hey, um, if you're you know a real fan doesn't care, like you know they'll they'll get it if they want it." It's like, but I'm not a Mondo fan. I'm a Jurassic fan. So like, yeah. You know, I've gotten I've gotten a few Mondo things. I've I've been lucky enough, I guess, to get a few items. Um, I think um, one was um, the Rocketeer and another one was the Force Awakens. So two like pretty long art prints. And recently I've been trying to get a lot for like Raiders of the Lost Ark or, or Indiana Jones in general or Jurassic Park or anything else, really. Um, and there is I have no shot. Like I, I don't know. Every time no, I attempt because... to do it, I cannot get it. It's it, they make them too exclusive. But like you say, when, when once it's all said and done, you can just buy it for two hundred dollars online if you want. You know, I through mean, eBay, it's crazy. I mean, maybe more. I, I've only ever got one Mondo print um, directly from Mondo, and it was specifically because they were doing a timed edition, not a limited. Yeah, maybe that's like, what I got. <laughs> But the thing is, they don't do that with every print. So, like, no. I got a man of, I got a man of steel one. Um, they they offered it. It was like whoever orders it in forty eight hours gets one, and that's awesome. But I understand that's not their business model. Um, but to me, so like anyway, just blasting these things out like in stock items on online is really frustrating because you're you're taking away from those who are actually trying to hunt them down, like and who are checking those sites religiously. It's almost like you're, I don't know it. I get it. Like I said, I'm, I'm a hypocrite when I say this because I can't just sit online and like, you know, I work, you know, eight to 10 hours a day, right? I can't just sit on online and keep refreshing, uh, you know, retail store websites. Like it's just, that just doesn't work for me. So yeah. it's frustrating and I get, and I just kind of wish people would maybe keep that information to themselves. But at the same time I get, they're trying to be friendly and, and, uh, you know, be helpful to everyone. It just kind of stinks when you get there and it, it didn't help you. It helped everyone else or someone else. I don't know. I, yeah. I, it, it's yeah. a little gripe. It's a little gripe. It is. It's a, it is a shame though when these things that, you know, super fans want go to scalpers and then end up on eBay. Like that's just a shame. And I know, I know there are people in our community, people that, that do a lot of stuff that buy stock and save them and, and, and people cannot get it. And I know we preached – Early on, uh, before Mattel actually started like releasing stuff, that these are made for kids. And yes, we constantly talk about buying this stuff, and we're always going out and getting this stuff. But I, I, I actively try to make sure that I'm not scooping up everything I possibly can. And if there is a kid in the aisle, let the kid look, and, and you know all that stuff. So I, I feel like I don't know. We're we're doing a disservice to the community. And stuff like that, if you're scalping, if you're saving the items for – if you're saving it for yourself that you want duplicates, that's fine. But don't save it to resell it. I don't know. That just really bugs me. I don't know. It bugs me because I – to me, toys are designed to be played with. All my toys are out of the box. Um, yeah. You know, and I, I did. I had that situation the other day. I was at Walmart, and uh, there was a figure I wanted, but there was also a little kid in the aisle. And it's like, well, I'm going to stand back. The kid's with his dad. If the kid chooses the thing I want, that really sucks. But you know what? I'll find it. I'll find it somewhere else. Like it's yeah. it's not the end of the world. Because he's going to grow up and be you hosting a podcast like, you know, in 20 years. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like so, that's what you want. That's you want the community to expand and grow. And and like I make this a family friendly podcast so those kids could listen if they wanted to and, and with their families and stuff like that. And we do have that. A lot of those a lot of families out there listen with their kids. 
And that's, I want everything to expand in that sense and shutting everybody out, whether it's, uh, you know, a longtime fan or a kid really bugs me. Um, I don't know. I, I just wish that stuff didn't happen. Yeah. I don't but, know. There's your, there's your PSA community. Yeah. We just yelled, we just yelled at you. I know. Yeah, guys grow up. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so lastly here, I guess you, you had some thoughts maybe on, um, my my interview with Dave Grossman uh, from Telltale and uh, what, what else was he from? He um he's on Earplay now, um, which is worthy. Yeah, with, with doing the Alexa apps. Yeah, yeah. Jurassic World. Uh, re, man, why am I blanking on the name? Jurassic World re, re, revealed. <laughs> I knew it was something like that. All I wanted to say is, one, I'm really mad at you, and two. <laughs> Uh, congratulations. That is an awesome interview to get. Um, when, when I kept reading that you had interviewed or were interviewing Dave Grossman, um, I was like that name, that name, I know that name. And I listened to a ton of video game, uh, podcast content. And it, it's like, to me, that is like the Dave Grossman. Uh, once it finally clicked in my head, like I knew, I know who Dave Grossman is, but like, once it clicked in my head, exactly like who you were talking to, I was like, that oh i can't swear i was like (laughs) you believe it like i can't believe he got this interview like he's he's arrived like like the the podcast is has arrived like to me like dave grossman is he's a video game legend like just being with telltale for so long um and and now doing this earplay thing which i cannot wait to play because i i was actually really excited to hear that he was excited about our 2xl conversations at least he said he was i mean i don't know if he was being honest but um, yeah, I just, you know, congratulations on that, man. That was awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't know much of anything about Jurassic world revealed before diving into it, uh, you know, as after it was released. So for me, this was all new and I didn't know who made it. Um, you know, you just had to do your research. You, you're not going to know until you find out. So I, I, I was, you know, sent the email about who was, who I'd be speaking with. And I just looked into it. I'm like, Oh my God, this guy's worked on some serious stuff. And you know, he's not he's not like some new guy. Like he didn't didn't just dive into it and just, you know, create some stuff. He's actually worked on some amazing projects. And I think that was that was a lot of fun. I had a great time talking with him and he's he's very insightful into the the new Jurassic World re- revealed experience, but you know, audio storytelling in general. It, like that is that's something that you know, we strive to do here is tell a story and and to make you guys interested and hopefully we've, you know, engrossed you. Yeah, I just because I listen to all this content, I'm really just involved in understanding. Like, uh, it's kind of like if you're really into comic books, you know who the writers and artists yeah. are. Um, video game dev is kind of the same thing. You kind of get to know these names uh, just through listening and playing their content. Uh, so, you know, for those who are unfamiliar, maybe you didn't listen to the podcast. Dave Grossman um, was really big at Telltale Studios, who did uh, a lot of uh, he did Jurassic Park the game. Um, they do the Walking Dead games over there. They do there's a Batman game they work on. Um, a lot of big franchises that um, that get video games it usually go through Telltale. Um, yeah, and, I love and to Telltale me, games. To me, to awesome. me, he's like a, to me, like his name is 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 legend. Like, uh, you know, like like Trevorrow at this point to me, right? Like, I, I just mm-hmm. I just know this name. So when it finally clicked, I was like super jealous. And uh, <laughs> yeah, just congrats, man, because that's a really cool interview to get for the podcast. Thanks. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Thanks for uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> so if you guys haven't listened, make sure to check that one out. That was uh, a few episodes ago. Um, but that well, we've run out of time, I guess, <laughs> after two hours. Our program here tonight on TV for the Jurassic Wire was two hours and six minutes long. Yeah. So this is probably what it's going to be. I mean, we did not stay on topic the entire time, but I think we talked about some good stuff. And I hope you guys all appreciated the uh the rants and the raving and the uh, te- you know putting you guys in your place and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't step out of line. Um, no, I think yeah. So you know, if you guys have uh, you know questions or comments or you have suggestions on what could make this segment better, uh, please let us know over at Twitter. Uh, specifically, because make it shorter. That's probably what they're saying. Well, but that's okay, right? So yeah. like, as as we're going through, we, we have a list, guys. It was like like five topics, right? And tonight we learned that five topics takes us about two hours. I think that's a little long, uh, not because I'm not having fun. That's the problem. I'm having too much freaking fun. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, if yeah, if you got any comments, if you want us to cover things, uh, you know, maybe uh, 
send us, you know, your, like things that you see in the community, uh, people that you want to point out. If uh, someone in the community is just being an awesome friend to you uh, or is, is, has really helped you out uh, with your Jurassic Park projects or something, let us know. Um, ideally, what I think we want to do is, is – uh, one go really deep into like kind of geeking out about the news that we cover every week, but then also like pointing out great community members and uh, exactly, you know, really yeah. celebrating what people are doing out there in the community. Uh, we've got a long three years ahead of us until the next Jurassic World movie, so yeah. we gotta we want to really really amp up this community in a positive way. Yeah, and we'll try not to be too watchdoggy when it comes to everything. We we called out some things here and there, but um, overall, I think we uh, try to put a positive spin on most of the uh, items here. Yeah, totally. Uh, so I'm I'm excited, man. Like I'm 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 excited to do this again. Yeah, new monthly segment. So uh, it'll be at the end of every month, as the uh, Jurassic Mailbag is at the start. So you'll get these back to back. So I think that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, Aaron. So where can everybody find you online? Uh, you guys can find me and put me in my place at Aaron <laughs> Dubair. Uh, Watch out, man. On Twitter. Yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the hate. called out. I'm going to get called out. But here's the thing. If you call me out on Twitter, I'm pretty sure I got a good reason for feeling the way I do. Um, <laughs> just like I, I was arguing with someone a few weeks ago about feathers and they were like, you're wrong, man. I'm like, OK, <laughs> like, sure. I'm, I'm not. But like, yeah. whatever. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, come interact <laughs> with me. Uh, I try to have a lot of fun. I'm not too great at getting on there every single day. But if you tweet at me, I'll see the little notification and I will come read it and I will probably talk back to you. So. Awesome. Hey, if you want to call me out as well, I'm at Brad Jost on Twitter. So I don't usually promote that, but maybe I'll start doing that here in this segment. <laughs> so, but at, but as we said, call us out in a nice, positive way. Yeah, like, be nice. Come, come at us with constructive criticism. Don't tell us that you want us to stop the podcast. It's not, <laughs> it's not happening. No. It's going to keep going forever. We're going to run it into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do that. All right, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, man, you have a good night. You too. Make sure to visit JurassicParkPodcast.com to find all of our past episodes, brand new news articles, information on how to contact us, and much more. It's a great source for everything related to the podcast and, of course, Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. Head to JurassicParkPodcast.com and help us build a great community. Anybody hear that? Thanks for listening to the 161st episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. Of course, a big thanks to Aaron for being the co-creator of the Jurassic Wire, helping me to bring this fun new segment to life. We discussed so many things, went on so many tangents. Hopefully we didn't hurt anybody's feelings in this segment. You know... It's all a conversation, and when it comes down to it, it's all in good fun. Uh, We look forward to doing this again next month in the Jurassic Wire. Stay tuned. If you want to interact with us, we do most of our work over on Twitter, at Jurassic Park Pod. We're also on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Jurassic Park Podcast, and our Instagram handle is at Jurassic Park Podcast. You can listen to us via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, our website, or wherever else podcasts are found. So make sure to subscribe to automatically get new episodes every week. If you haven't already, please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It will seriously help out our rankings and make it easier for Jurassic fans like you to find us. Don't forget to check out JurassicParkPodcast.com to find everything you heard here today. If you want to get a hold of us, you can email us with any news stories, MP3s, comments, or if you want to debut a segment of your own, send them to JurassicParkPod at gmail.com. Or you could submit questions directly on our website contact form. If you'd like to record something for the show, send it in to us and we'll feature it in an upcoming episode. If you don't have any way to record, you can give our voicemail line a call and leave us a message. That number is 732-825-7763. Thanks for listening, and enjoy. No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. You will remember to wash your hands before you eat anything. See, nobody cares. Nice hat. Five minutes. Drop what you're doing and leave now.